Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from L.A. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Baylor, Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Jenny. How are you today? Uh, Good. So, the 49ers did the Browns what I always do to Shannon. Uh, no, Ram no, no, off the field. Was, uh, yeah, no, that's no, what I saw last day. night. Yeah. I'll be playing my yeah, flag over here. Like, yeah, do you? <laughs> Got another one. Yeah. No flags <laughs> around here. No flags around here. We have so much to discuss today. Are the guys buying Stephen Jones support of Jason mm. Garrett? And did Aaron Rodgers actually have his best game of the season? <gasps> Against the Cowboys? Skip up. But first, we are going to start with Baker Mayfield and the Browns. It went from bad to worse last night for Baker in the 31-3 loss against the 49ers. The second-year quarterback was 8 for 22 for 100 yards, committing three turnovers with a QBR, guys, of just one. But the rough night for Mayfield began prior to kickoff. Niners All-Pro defensive back Richard Sherman said Baker was disrespectful from the start. Sherman said, quote, what's amazing and annoying was him not shaking hands at the beginning. That's some college bleep. It's ridiculous. We're all trying to get psyched up but shaking hands with your opponent. That's NFL etiquette. And when you pull Bush League stuff that's disrespectful to the game, and believe me, that's going to get us fired up. Hmm. Shannon, how hmm. much did getting even with Baker impact this game? It plays a big role, and uh, Baker's going to find that out the hard way, Skip. And as as Sherm said, that's college BS. That's high school BS, Skip. You, I, I play, I've been a part of some big rivalry games, playing in the AFC West. The Raiders, Skip, they're our rival. We have Raider Week. Kansas City Chiefs, we hate them. We get up for those guys. But at the coin toss, we shake their hands. We're going to knock your block off. Mm-hmm. Skip, you know the rivalry that when I went to Baltimore with Pittsburgh and the Tennessee Titans, Joy Porter and the guys that they are in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. shake the hands. But just so you know, I'm trying to detach your head from your body. At Tennessee Titans, Skip, same thing. no love loss. Yep. But at the coin toss, Skip, mm-hmm. look, I don't like you, but I respect you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you your respect. And what Baker needs to understand, Skip, the football field It's kind of like the Serengeti. It's a prison environment, Skip. It's all about respect. And if you don't get it, those guys will take it. Mm. And that will be after Baker's ass his entire career, Skip, because he shows no respect to no one. It's all about, well, if you're not in the brown and orange. But guess what, bruh? Mm. You got to leave that comfort zone of the brown and orange. Mm. You got to play against guys that's not in that brown and orange. Skip, out of 15, 1,600 guys in the NFL, it's hard-pressed for me to believe that everybody in the league likes Tom Brady, but you'd be fine, even more hard-pressed to find somebody that don't respect him. Nobody goes out of their way to take any cheap shots at Tom Brady mm-hmm. because that's the kind of respect they yep. have for him. Mm-hmm. Do they want to beat him? You best believe it. Mm-hmm. Do they want to knock his block off? You best believe it. But what Baker has brought upon himself, Skip, with his shenanigans, now he got so upset, remember at Kansas? Two years ago, Skip, he got so upset because they wouldn't shake his hand. Mm, glad he, you brought that up. He brought that same BS. Yep. To the NFL. Skip, you can't do that. Skip, this is about respect. Mm. It, uh, what was I think about three weeks ago it came out. He was in GQ where he said, I can't believe the Giants took that guy. Normally, court, Daniel, Jones. Daniel Jones, the Giants. <clears throat> Normally, quarterbacks give them a little bit more reserve. They might say things in a private conversation. You know, you're talking to your boys. Man, I can't believe they took Daniel Jones. Mm-hmm. Yada, yada. But to speak that publicly, to let that get to print? Yep. Nah, you don't do that. It gets guys going. It makes guys, and guess what, Skip? Every time they get him on the ground, you're going to see guys stand up and look at him. Mm. Hey, bro, we ain't in that brown and orange, huh? Mm. You're going to see guys like Nick Bosa do what they did. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the reoccurring theme. Sooner or later, Breaker is going to get through Baker's head. Oh, if you don't like it, this is who I am. They will break you. They might not stop you, but they'll break you the habit of being mm. disrespectful to other guys in the league. Mm. Guys have been in this league far too long, Skip, and you gotta pay your you gotta pay your respect. Mm. Guys that came before you and guys that are come that will come after you. If you do not pay this game respect, mm-hmm. Skip, it'll take it from you. And those guys last night with his behavior, they took it from him. And mm. and and the pile, you know, the pile on, Skip, he played terrible. Now, Skip, you've told me for a very long time he's a mm. careful gambler. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Mm. Uh-uh. Since he started, mm. nobody has thrown more interceptions than Baker Mayfield. Mm. He's second in turnovers behind Jerry Goff. Mm. Four touchdowns, eight interceptions. Mm. 
He's not playing well, Skip. He's double clutching the ball. He's patting the ball. It's hard for me to believe that the guy that they traded, Kevin Zeitler, was part of the trade that he got mm-hmm. from Odell Beckham. Kevin Zeitler is not Quentin Nelson, mm-hmm. the all-pro guard from the car, from the uh, Colts, Skip. He's not Zach Martin. Mm-hmm. So please, let's not go over oh, his offensive line. That's basically pretty much the same offensive line that they had last year. Baker Mayfield, expectations mm-hmm. is what we got here, Skip. Mm-hmm. I tell you, that's the number one killer of young mm-hmm. careers because not only was it good enough that Cleveland, you look at A.B.'s gone, Le'Veon, What's going to happen with the Steelers? We don't know if nobody uh, – what's Lamar, what's Lamar Jackson going to look like throwing the football? We knew what Cincinnati knew it was going to be. Man, mm-hmm. Cleveland, Odell, look at what they did. They brought in Odell and mm-hmm. Olivier yeah. Vernon, got Greedy Williams. Woo, Skip, they're going to they be doing it. Mm-hmm. And then here was the, the, uh, uh, the final complete, Skip, Baker Mayfield. Vegas said the most money is coming in on Baker to be the MVP. Mm-hmm. So what about those expectations? Mm-hmm. A one – Baker Mayfield one. QBR was one better than mine sitting on my couch up there in Bel Air. Oh, that's actually one point four. Oh, that that wasn't. <laughs> you got to give him the point four. Right? So you want that point four in there, Skip? Yep. Skip, he's gonna learn the hard way. You covered this game longer than I played it. Good. You know what this game is based on, mm-hmm. and if you don't respect those guys, they'll take it from you. They'll okay. take it out your butt. So, just for the record, I want to get this straight. You are now officially off the no, Baker no, no. bandwagon no, 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 because no, last year you no. co-opted my bandwagon no, no. and Jenny's yeah. bandwagon. Yeah, no, me too. I'm and you tried it. to drive our bandwagon. Oh, I got it. No, shake no, and bake. No, shake no, and bake. No, 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 Skip. All right? I've never been okay. a fan of his behavior. Oh. Jenny, I've always said his behavior rubs me the wrong way. His talent is not to be questioned. Okay. His behavior leaves a lot to be desired, and that's the problem that I have with him. Okay. So I'm going to give you that this had extraordinary shocking impact on this football game because I about fell out of my chair. The first play of the game, Breida goes untouched (laughs) 83 yards and waves goodbye to the DBs. And you said untouched. Untouched. I mean, and there was no real trick play to it. It was just your basic handoff and he's gone. And I'm like, wow. And they came out with college rivalry kind of energy off their bye week and just just splash their energy all over the Cleveland Browns, mm-hmm. the poor Browns. And I'm going to remind everybody, the Browns had just gone to Baltimore and scored 40 points and won 40 to 25. And in that game, Baker went 20 of 30 for 342 and a touchdown. Mm-hmm. And then that happened last night. And also before I launch on everything I want to say about Baker, I just want to say for the record, if Dak Prescott ever had a game remotely as bad as Baker had last night, I would never hear the end of it on this show. It would be brought up for years to come on this show. Especially televised. Okay. He went 8 of 22. You mean like Monday Night Football? Yeah, yeah, yeah. big, big okay. stage. Baker went 8 of 22 for 100 yards. A hundo. No, no <laughs> touchdowns and two interceptions and a lost fumble and got sacked four times. Yeah. He fumbled another time and they got, got it, it back. back. So they, two fumbles. Yeah. One loss. Yes. If Dak ever had remotely this bad a game, I would have to quit because I would never hear the yeah. end. Everybody who came and sat in that yeah. chair and that guy in that chair, they would just bring it up every topic every day. If Dak right? ever had a game like that, That's Jerry's going to cut him a check for five million a year. <laughs> Sorry, Skip. That's Jerry just might sell the team. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now back to Baker Mayfield. I do remain a fan of Baker's, and I get everything you just said because you're right, right, right about how you have to learn to play this game. This isn't college football, (laughs) but you brought it up, and this is why I would like to hear Baker's side of the story, which we don't yet have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why would Baker get so upset at Kansas two years ago when he reached out to shake the Kansas captain's hands right. and they refused? Again, Kansas was horrible. Yes. And it was a joke and it was going to be a runaway. And Baker reached out like you should, right. gentlemanly handshake. Nope, they all refused. And he's like, okay, okay, I got it. And then during the game, he got into it with Jayhawk fans. I can't remember if you were at that I did game. not you have didn't this do that game, one. No. Okay. But he got into it with the fans. They're going back and forth, yelling about basketball versus football because yeah. obviously Kansas, Kansas is really is good in basketball. Cool. Right. And blah, blah, blah. And then he goes so crazy, he grabbed his crotch mm-hmm. just to signal across the field, okay, I, I got your handshake over here, right. okay? Mm-hmm. So, again, he was taking that handshake reverse seriously like, 
like, I, I, you better shake my hand because that's the way you play this game. Correct. Right? Right. So I'm having a hard time believing that he refused to shake the 49ers captain's hands. I'm just having a hard time too. with it. I agree. Like, I don't get it. I, it, it doesn't, it's, it's completely uncharacteristic because for all that he does irreverently, blasphemously, he also has respect for the game, and in some ways, he does play the game the right way. And he does compete hard and play hard and all those good things. There's, there's good to Baker Mayfield. But Skip, do, do, do you remember in the article he said that the University of Oklahoma made him apologize? Mm -hmm. But the, on the sincerity meter, on a scale of 1 to 10, he was a zero. Okay, but for what? Which incident? For when, the, when, when, he got when caught? Oklahoma made him apologize. Oh, for the for the incident, gesture. right, right. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and, and and they on the sincere, and he said on the sincerity meter, mm -hmm. on a scale of one to ten, he was a zero. Okay, but but again, they wouldn't shake his hand. Right. So now we got reverse going right. on. So why would Baker refuse to shake Richard Sherman's hands or the, the other forty? Because that's captains? Baker, Skip. That's who he is. Okay, but but why would he get so upset that the KU captains, the Kansas captains, wouldn't shake Skip, his hands? Skip. I'm not getting this I, two plus two doesn't equal four because baker is skip baker is under this notion that he's uniquely different because the nfl has done it this way i'm gonna do it my way if i don't want to shake your hand i'm not gonna shake okay, your hand i, I want to know if there's some bad blood that we don't know about if something that the 49ers did alienated him so, something's going on here that we don't know there's one more piece to this puzzle we will find out Probably not until Wednesday yeah. when he finally talks. Right. Unless he, he speaks so. some today. I don't know. He he been a, what are you going to talk about? He got nothing to well, talk I mean, about after, the, after what they put on him. Oh, yeah. He better move on to the next week. If I know Baker, he may post about this. He, he may have some response this morning about it. I don't know. But, but again, for whatever, I, I just need to know his motivation because he's not had a history in the National Football League of not shaking hands before the game. Nobody's ever called him out for that before. Mm -hmm. This isn't routine behavior for him. Well, I think the thing for him, Skip, is that what Baker has created for himself, he's created a lot of a lot of negativity around him because he wants to do things his way. Okay, he got, okay, the week before they lose to the Rams. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. He didn't play particularly well. He goes out. Oh, he threw into the end zone to tie the game at the end of the game and threw a nice pass to his backup tight end, but go ahead. He goes out on the road, you mentioned the stats against Baltimore, plays really well. He did. And what did he say? Instead of saying, you know, that was a big win for us, he's talking about keep that energy. Now, I want that energy that you had last week, the okay. week before. So now, guess what? So what he's trying to win a short-term game, mm -hmm. but he's in a game with a long-term future. Mm -hmm. Baker, just let it go and just play football. Bruh, I'm telling you, this game has seen better. It's broken better men than you. You can't win this battle. Okay, I still want to know if, in fact, this is what happened. I'm taking Richard Sherman's word for it. I'm right. not sure about that. Um, George Kittle, who was one of the captains, yeah. said that he did slap hands with him somehow. He just called it slap, a quick hand slap. So, I don't know. Right. I don't know. Weird. I, I don't know. It's weird, though. Yeah, it's just weird. I want to know if somebody said something before the game that set him off. Mm -hmm. him. We saw what he did to the TCU player right. who dared to run across the right. back line of his end zone during warm-ups, and he drilled him right in right. the head. But see, Skip, and those are things, if you're at Oklahoma— and you play lesser tier program. Mm -hmm. Skip, there have been only a handful of times that Baker Mayfield went up against a team mm -hmm. that had a comp had players that was equal to or superior than his. Mm -hmm. He would have never done that to Alabama. He would never, just like now. Mm -hmm. He won't, well, he should bring that attitude. He should bring, let somebody run through and hit one of them NFL players okay, today. Remember, all time chip on shoulder. Yeah. Two time walk on who won the Heisman Trophy. Yes. And yeah. got his team to the national yeah, semifinal. Yeah. Do you know what most of these guys mm -hmm. had to get to, mm -hmm. get through to get okay. to the NFL? Yep. There, there are a lot of stories that are unlike, you know, Baker, the two-time walk-on. Yep. But there's a lot of guys that had to overcome an awful lot. Yep. They got three, four chips on their mm -hmm. shoulders. But Baker needs to understand, Skip, and you know this from covering this game mm -hmm. and you've been in no, locker rooms. I, I agree with your big picture and I agree with the other Richard Sherman quote about he hasn't earned anything in this league. Um, I'm going to skip down. It, it, uh, if Mahomes did that, would, it would be one thing because he was the MVP. Right. But then he said, but he would never do that because he has too much respect for this game. Right. That's the quote right there. Right. Uh, and, and when you see a guy who doesn't have respect for the game, you humble him every chance you get. See? Because eventually he will have to, he, he will have respect for the league got or him. he'll be out of the league. Got him. Okay? Wow. True, true, and true. Yes. Okay, I got it. And I need to know the backstory of why he would 
would stoop to not shaking hands with the 49ers. And I am troubled by the fact that he's not won anything and he's all over my TV every night. Oh, you see all them commercials, huh? Uh, yeah, they're just, oh. where it's his house, but it's his stadium. He's right. busier okay. than he Dak. Cut, uh, he cutting grass, he's doing some of everything. I know, man, he doesn't have as many as Dak, game. but but they're relentlessly <laughs> playing. Always Always playing. on. And, and the point is, you need to be able to back it right. up. Oh, okay, okay. The Richard Sherman. But what are we gonna talk about? That? What are we gonna talk about the game last night mm-hmm. and how he played mm-hmm. and how you you gave some of the stats: eight of twenty-two, mm-hmm. a hundo, mm-hmm. no tub, two picks, a fumble. He fumbled twice, mm-hmm. but he lost one of them. Yep, that was terrible. Okay. Now let's go quickly to the flashpoint of the game where he did have a chance to redeem himself. Yes. And this is late in the first half. It's 4:58 left in the second quarter, and it's third and goal from the six. And if we could see that play, he hits Callaway. It, it looked pretty. It was maybe a touch low, yeah. but it hit him right in the hands. And it's going to be a touchdown. I'm pretty sure. Hit him. Yeah, right we got there. it right over. Hit him okay. between the one-one. Okay. One. okay, okay, got it. And he just muffs it up into the air, and Kawan Williams just grabs it out of thin air for the 49ers, and he is off to the races for 49 yards. Mm-hmm. And six plays later, and seemed like one clock minute <laughs> later, it's 21 to three. It was about to be 14 to 10. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe they would have made a game right. of it at mm-hmm. 14 to 10, but 21 to three, it felt over. Skip, that is a, and people don't understand, that's a hard catch. Remember Jackie Smith dropped the touchdown? I got it, I got it. Mm. I dropped John Elway's 200 yeah. touchdown yeah. pass, the very very same place, Skip, in the back yeah. of the end zone. Yeah. Trying to slide and catch, the ball hit my knee, popped up. It Fortunately for us, it went out of bounds. We yeah. ended up getting a field goal. Like Roger Staubach said after that Super Bowl, I took some off it because he was so wide open, but I threw him kind of a change up, right. you know? And Baker might have taken a touch off right. it. Like, you're so open, I'm just going to float this right. to you. And he's just He's like, trying to slide it, end yeah. up yeah. getting into his knee okay, and it whatever. popped. Hmm. But that's a that's a flashpoint, and I can't make a case that the Browns are going to win the game, but right. they could have made it a game, competitive game from that point on. But now let's look at Baker in the big picture. He has been horrendously bad this year compared to last year. Correct. With the one glitch being, the one blip being, Ball. The, the Baltimore game. Correct. But the rest of it, his total QBR for the year is 30. Average QBR is 30, and it ranks 31st of 33 qualified Yikes. starting quarterbacks. And these two guys probably not going to qualify. That's Cam Newton and Luke Falk. That is correct. Oh, so Dak Prescott is still number one. And Man, you Baker ain't is number that. 30. I just had to throw that in. Always number relevant. one is Dak Prescott. Number 30 is Baker Mayfield. <laughs> well, guy, well, he about to throw one of the old Baker Mayfield games in there. Is he really? Yeah, yo, guy you about, about to throw one of them. He about to throw one of old Baker games. Wait, the guy who threw for 329 in the second half? That's what they call it. They're going to relabel it. Oh, oh, you got a Baker game in you today, huh? Okay. So, so wait, Dak threw for 329 in the second half (laughs) Sunday and Baker threw for 100 in four quarters? (laughs) He threw for 100. Or three and a half quarters. Three and a half quarters. Yanked it, really. And Freddie, you see uh, Baker threw one pass up the sideline and uh, and Freddie Kitchen just like, "Mm." Freddie like, Baker, you about to get me fired. I ain't going to be wearing the brown and orange. Mm. (laughs) Freddie's not going to last much longer. I got to tell you, somebody's going to have to take the fall. uh, and it's going to be free. You don't think Freddie make it out the season? No, I don't think so. I think at the I, rate they're going. I think he'd make it at least a year. Uh, maybe. I but hope get, so. But hold on. I, we, look, Baker didn't play particularly well, and there's no way around that. But this defense, Skip, what was that? Skip, how you give up 270 yards on the ground on 40? 270? You give up 70 yards a clip? Yeah, I'd like to chalk it up so you don't have Denzel Ward or Greedy Williams at the corners, but I don't think they could have stopped that. They they don't play D-line. I need some some D-line. Because it wasn't like Garoppolo was 20 or 29, 181. He he wasn't great. Yeah. No. But Skip, what is this? Man, rough shot right over the top of him. Couldn't stop it. Couldn't stop the run any way, shape, or form. I'm sorry. They they were even running George Kittle on little inside reverses, right? I, I think everybody's suffering from expectations. Maybe Cleveland started reading the paper. Maybe Cleveland thought, you know what? You know, we are talented. Look yep. what we got. We got Odell Nye right. and Jarvis. And- well, who detonated those expectations? Odell Beckham Jr. What has he done the last two games? Career low two game totals. Uh. Previous game at Baltimore, it was two for 20. And uh, two for 27. That was last night, two for 27 and two for 20 at Baltimore. And so he's had career You're, you're going to talk about them drops he put in last okay. night? Okay, well, again, and Freddie's trying to keep him happy by letting him throw an early pass. Yep. If we could see all these Odell <laughs> plays, he, he let him throw one. Then he let him line up at running back and run one. There's the pass to Jarvis. And he also, there's, there's a running play. Okay, all right. 
Yeah. Okay, and he t got tagged by Jimmy Ward at the end of that play. I don't know if Baker's going to, yeah. I mean, uh, Odell's going to love that. Yeah. And then they used him as a decoy on a play that he he sneaked it to Chubb yeah. for a nice gain. So he's trying to get Odell involved in the offense just to keep him happy. But this morning, Odell Beckham Jr. is going to wake up out there in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. And he's going to say, where am I? What's happening yeah. here? Wait a second. We lost another game on Monday Night Football. We got embarrassed on Monday Night Football, and I only caught two balls, and I had six targets. It's not good enough. I'm waiting for the Odell meltdown, and it will come sooner than later. Skip, this offense needs to run through Nick Chubb. Yep. <laughs> That's what needs to happen. Freddie made the mistake. I can keep everybody happy. No, you can't. Yep. Not to win football games Whew. because there were times when from 96 to 98 when we were at our peak in Denver, Skip. Yep. The one thing we knew for certain. Now, there might be a game I get six or seven passes. The next game it might be Ed McCaffrey. The mm -hmm. next game it might be Rod Smith. The one thing we knew 100%, Terrell Davis was going to get 20 to 25 carries per game. That was the only thing 100%. Mm -hmm. As far as catches and who got them, we had no idea. John Elway was a restaurant, first come, first serve. We were trying to beat each other open because mm -hmm. that's who was going to get the ball. John mm -hmm. wasn't force feeding anybody. Skip, you can't keep everybody happy. There's only 65 plays in the game. Well, if you give Chubb 20, 25 carries, it's not like Baker's going to complete all of his passes. Some got the ball incomplete. Some mm -hmm. got to get tipped. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to force feed, and, and, and Baker's steady doing this. He patting. Run, mm -hmm. He running. And, and both of You mentioned, know what's in the back of his mind? I got to get it to Man, look at okay. Gotta get Odell. Got to keep him happy. Too. Got to find him. Got to find out. Where's Odell? Oh, okay. he's doubled. I, I can't. I can't. I'm patting. I'm patting. They're I'm coming. Yeah. Th th those guys, are, I mean, yep. the 49ers, are, dare we say, I mean, they're one of the two unbeaten teams in the NFL. Now, we're going to find out a little bit more as we <laughs> go. Um, mm -hmm. They play the Rams. I think they play the they Rams do. coming yeah. up here shortly. So yep. we'll find out a little okay. more about that. I think a lot more. <laughs> but the one thing we can say, Skip, Kyle Shanahan can call an offense. Yeah. You, he, can, he can dial up some offense. The creativity in the run game, the way he gets to, I mean, I mean, that, that, I mean I, that was not a whole lot of creative. I mean, just hand the ball off and go 83 yards. But I like some of the motion that he was using so I. to create angles in which his guys can get up. The good win is, oh, is yeah. uh, beautiful to yes, watch. Yes, yes. Yeah. On that fourth and one play, he sends Goodwin in, mo like, deep. Bubble motion, motion. Behind, from yeah. behind the formation, yep. yes. Yep. And then hand it to the guy right up the gut, and the guy picks up his fourth and one. He picks up like eight, nine yards. Yep. So he can he can design an offense. Mm -hmm. But it looks like they had to they go try to bottle him up. Uh, Joey Bosa, we're going to talk about him a little later, but he was coming. Hmm. Buckner and and the, Solomon, those guys were coming. They, yep. they they're good. They're good. No, they look legit. I don't know if they're the best team in the NFL. No, 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 no. Start finding out about that, but but the, they made the Browns look very average. Yeah. Look, my bottom line to the Browns is Odell's more trouble than he's worth. I just. It's just, well, damn, you want to move on from Odell already? Yep. I so never loved him in the first place. So you want to trade him next year? So, so I'm just saying you're pretty much stuck with him. You ain't stuck with him. I mean, you can move him. I, I like the Browns last year with a bunch of no-name receivers where he's just throwing it all over the lot to this guy. And that. You didn't have Where'd the force, that guy come from? You didn't have to force feed anybody. Uh -uh. No, nope. I just like the feel of it. You're right. That's more Baker style, yep. if you think of it, a lot of ways. It doesn't get easier for the Browns. Next two games, they host the Seahawks, and they visit the Patriots. Mm. So Seahawks ain't no easy win, It's Skip. not getting no. easier from yeah. here on out. I, I do want to hear from Baker yeah. about what happened last night. I want, if, if he digs in and says, I just didn't feel like shaking their hands, then you every point you made is dead on right. Okay. And every Looking point Richard it. made. Was yeah, right. there's got to be another side yeah. of the story. No mercy. Hey, football fans, are you an Amazon Prime member? Did you know that you have Thursday Night Football? Yeah, that's right. Thursday Night Football has returned to Prime Video for a third season. The cool thing is you can catch all the action on your TV, on the web, or on your mobile device anywhere in the world. And the experience is next level. With Prime Video's X-Ray feature, you can access next-gen stats, play history, and team information. And now it's available on iOS, Android, Fire tablets, and Fire TV. If you're ready to hear a new take on the game, you can switch over to sport broadcast legends Hannah Storm and Andrea Kramer for the play-by-play. -play. So if you don't have cable or simply want to experience the future of football, tune in this Thursday. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern and kickoff is at 8 20 p.m. Eastern. Also available on Fox and NFL Network. NFL Network simulcast subject to change. Thursday Night Football is presented by Bud Light Platinum. No mercy. 
Well, we've got some Jason Garrett doubters. They've emerged after the Cowboys have dropped two in a row following a 3-0 and start. Garrett is 80-61 and in the regular season and has reached the postseason three times. And yesterday, Stephen Jones was asked if his coach was in danger of losing his job and had this to say. Absolutely not. He's uh, done a great job with this team. As you saw yesterday, he had this team playing hard. Uh, when a lot of teams, that game could have gotten real ugly. Uh, you know, he's got them playing hard, and we've just got to correct a few things. And, uh, you know, and we'll be back in line. We t- I totally believe that. I know Jerry believes it. <clears throat> Shannon, do you believe Stephen Jones? Hell no. Mm. That's why he's in the last year of his contract. Skip, if they thought Jer- if they thought Jason Garrett was on solid foot, him, Skip, they didn't have to give him a three-year extension. Most guys, what do they do, Skip? Give him a one-year extension to make sure they're not a lame duck. They gave him a one-year extension. They didn't give him that. They say, and Jerry made it abundantly clear that he wasn't going to do this at Combine in February. Mm. No, I'm not extending him. He's telling him, you're coaching for your job. I believe Jason Garrett needs to get to, at a minimum, NFC Championship game. He might need to take it a step further. Might. My, Jerry's looking at it like this. I believe the first three games, Skip, I think everybody thought they'd be 3-0. Nobody, no, they caught no one by surprise mm-hmm. winning those first three games. Jason Garrett could have got on a lot more solid footing mm-hmm. had they won the next two. Five and oh is a lot better. And now we like, okay, we got us, we got, this might be this our coach. Mm-hmm. But when you go three and oh against some bottom feeders and you lose two games against team, because you're not gonna see Washington. You're not going to see the Dolphins, and you're not going to see the Giants in the playoffs. Mm. There's a great chance you'll see the Saints. Mm. There's a great chance you'll see Green Bay and might see a couple of other teams that are better than Washington, Miami, than the Giants and the Giants in the playoffs. So he hasn't done anything he wasn't supposed to do, and I think that's the crooks of why Jerry didn't extend him. You won the game you're supposed to. Not one time, how many times that you know, like, man, Jason won that game. He wasn't supposed to win that one. Mm-mm. He wasn't supposed to Oh, he won that game now. Mm. But there have been a lot of games, Skip Bates is coming here. We had the better football team. We should have won that game if we didn't have Coach Clapp. I do not believe Stephen Jones, Skip. Mm. I believe if they thought uh, uh, Jason Garrett was their coach of the future, they would have extended him. At the bare minimum, they would have given him a one-year deal to make sure he's not a lame duck. Okay. But they didn't do that. So to say that he's... Oh, he's clearly mm-hmm. on the hot seat. And Jerry is the, is the chef, and he turned it up. He on high heat. Mm. I'm not saying he's going to get fired during the season, yep. but don't let him get to the NFC Championship game. Okay. I don't see a scenario where he comes back. <sighs> okay, so we're talking about semantics here because Stephen Jones is, is referring to right here, right now, he is not on the hot seat, in, meaning he's not in danger yeah. of being fired I, next week or the next right. week. To your point, he's on the <laughs> longer-term hot seat, if you don't win two playoff games this yeah. year, I'm pretty sure you're gone. Yes. And it may be, to your point, if you don't get us to the Super Bowl, you're gone. Right. Because it's just been too long and too much right. mediocrity. Right. I, I want to make a point here that I'm sure is starting to form itself in the backs of Stevens and Jerry's minds. Okay. Coach Clapp, he has zero motivational fire and charisma <laughs> in him. And I'm going to demonstrate just how much of a zero he is as a motivator. <laughs> What happened in the playoff game when Green Bay visited back after the 2016 season? What happened to start that game? They, failed they were not ready to play. Mm-hmm. They were not ready. On defense, they just, I don't know what happened. They went 13-3 and and had home field throughout the playoffs. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they weren't ready, and they fell behind 21-3 to mid-second quarter. Yes. And then Dak Prescott slowly but surely threw them back into that game to tie it at 31 all, and you know the end of the story. But but again, they were down 21 to three, and then it was 31 all. I'm going to show you a pattern here. Mm-hmm. Then, what happened in the playoff game out here at the Coliseum against the Rams on a fateful Saturday night last January? Well, you guys did score first, well, I think. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think so. Did we score first? Yeah. Well, it was 20 to seven at halftime, yeah, yeah. thanks to the Rams running for 170 yards in the first half. Yeah not ready to play on defense, right? Just not ready. You you can't. It was like they had just stymied a Seattle team that led the league in rushing right. and held them to 73 total rush yards, and then you come out and you're just not ready to play. 
Who was the greatest motivator I was ever around? Teams I covered in the mid-90s in Dallas, Texas, Jimmy Johnson, <laughs> who could create a pregame force field unlike any I had ever experienced. Yes. Those players lived in fear of him. Yes. They played in fear, in good fear of him, mm-hmm. where they just, hey, he, he, wasn't a, he would cut people right. in a heartbeat. Right. Irvin Richards, after the final regular season game in 1992, was a backup running back, and he didn't like how he fumbled in the right. fourth quarter against the Bears in the final regular season game. He just whacked him. Hey, what about the guy Go he on. cut? Yeah, the kicker? He, no, he cut oh. the guy, guy who fell asleep in the meeting. Okay. And they asked, they asked Jimmy, said, Jimmy, what that? And what if that was Troy? He said, I'd have woke his ass up. <laughs> okay. okay, but that's that's Jimmy as opposed to yeah, Jason Exactly. Garrett. Okay, and then what happened Sunday in the biggest shock to me? It was 31-3 to three late in the third quarter. 31-3, to three, yeah. that is a bad oh, sign. Oh, whoa, 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 but guess what? I see, uh, Jenny, huh. I don't know if you noticed this, but I see a, I sense a reoccurring theme. Mm. The same coach has the same quarterback. Oh. I don't know if you noticed that, Jenny. Yeah, and then what uh-huh. happened? Uh-huh. Then what happened? Mm-hmm. Same coach what happened? had the same quarterback, and he came within an outrageously uncalled pass interference of throwing them all the way back in that game. No, he was within one bad call, bad non-call. Of th- he threw for 329 yards in the second half. Are you seeing a pattern here? Yeah. Okay, and what happened last year? They fell to three and five and just looked deadheaded, dead in the water. Right. They lost on, they stunk it up on the Monday night stage against yes. Tennessee yep. at Jerry World, mm-hmm. three and five. And then what happened? Dak Prescott said, no, we got this. We no, we took, we're, we're about to take off. And they went to Philly and beat the Eagles. And all of a sudden, they go on this late season role inspired by the quarterback, who is the leader and the face of this franchise, above the head coach. And all of a sudden, they finish eight and one, and then they lose the playoff game eight and two. So, you know what? I had a feeling, you know what, Janet? I don't like to do this because I was saving but these, I was saving this for a rainy day. <laughs> and it doesn't rain much in Southern California, yeah. but in here, it's raining. You mean R A Y N E? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. That da, 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 da. <laughs> Sunday, when the score was between zero and 14 points, Dak Prescott was nine of 16, mm-hmm. 140 pass yards, three INTs, and zero touchdowns. Yeah. Can I interest okay. you in that, Skip Bayless? Okay. It wasn't until the game got completely out of hand in which he threw for 323 and had two touchdowns. With no, but that ain't none of my business. I don't even know why I brought that up. 329 in the second half. How many quarterbacks in this league are capable of throwing for 329 and a half? Not many. A bunch of them. Not many. A bunch nope. of them when you're down 31-3. And by the way, he's doing this without his star left tackle and star right tackle against two of the best Smith pass rushers that you'll find in the league. They're all over him, and he's just hanging in the pocket, completing ball we after ball. Excuse, we, didn't that, we didn't make that excuse for Pat Mahomes because okay. so, Eric Fisher started left tackle, yeah. Sammy Watkins, and Tyreek Hill did not play. Mm, they lost the game. We, we didn't make excuses. Skip Bader, uh, Jason Garrett is not getting it done, and neither is a quarterback. Okay, the quarterback is playing his no, tail yeah. off. No, he Still end. number one in QBR. How can that be in the yeah. whole league? That's and, pretty and impressive. The, and, the, and, the, and the loss so, is mountain. Here's the point. Every time I pick the Dallas Cowboys to win, in a game or the division or the conference. It's always, I always tell you, it's in spite of the head coach. I just, I like him personally, but I I got no use for him as the head coach. He's outlived his welcome in Dallas. Again, that was another home field embarrassment. That's home field. You're behind 31 to three. That's a bad sign. There are some owners in this league that would have canned him on Monday morning. Seriously, because- they made three and two skills. Yeah. Okay. Well, now you're defending. No, it. but but the good thing yeah. is, is your your expectations. I told you to temper those. Okay. You, it's you a the bad one that came- sign when you fall behind 31 to three. It's a great sign that your quarterback almost pulls off the greatest comeback in regular season well, history. Well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. When you won in Lambeau Field and you had home field throughout the entirety of the playoffs mm-hmm. and the divisional round, you fall behind 21-3. Who's your quarterback? Mm-hmm. Okay, you come out here to L.A. last year in the divisional round of the playoffs, and you fall behind 20 to 7. Who's your quarterback? Yeah, you're playing against really oh, good oh, defenses. Oh. I mean, like right, the Rams' defense, what did it do to Tom Brady in the Super Bowl? You skip. You make my okay. point. You make no, my point. no, you're making mine. No, no. They, they came all the way back to a one-score game at the Coliseum thanks to the quarterback. Skip. So he, in other he had words, a QBR of like, what was it, 83 in that game? But you remember, he had a 99 yeah. QBR in the first three weeks yeah. of the season. Yeah. So he was putting up ginormous numbers against bad teams. Okay. What have you done for me lately against teams that's possibly going to be in the playoffs? He played very well against New Orleans at New Orleans. 
Okay. And he come to my restaurant. What do you order? Okay. And yet, yeah, what did my defense do at New Orleans against Teddy Bridgewater, who lit up Tampa there last Sunday, right? They held him to 12 points. Yeah. He held him to no touchdowns, yeah. right? And what your guy do? Okay. He couldn't get Carolina, two touchdowns. I'm just saying, how can a defense go from you go to New Orleans and hold that offense out of the end zone the whole game to you're behind 31 to three? Well, they didn't anticipate the quarterback turning uh, the ball over three uh, times. And I told you at my restaurant, you get two things. I don't have QBR on my me- menu, and I don't play, I don't have play very well on my menu. Uh, you get dub or L. Now you want what Dak had? Uh, Dak got a hot uh, L. Yeah. You want that? Cause I got plenty of them waiting for you. Dak threw one interception in that Dak game. Dak threw three interceptions. Okay, stop it. You know what happened. I don't know what happened. I know what happened. Yeah. Okay. So back to Jason Garrett. He is Coach Clapp. That they are going to prop him up because they like him like a son. He's right. like a brother yeah. to Stephen and a son to Jerry. Yes. And it drives me crazy because they have to wait for circumstances to motivate the football team because he's not capable. I know him. He's a really nice guy. Yeah, What's the old cliche in sports? Nice guys finish, finish last. last. Okay, that's what it feels like to me. Yeah. But Skip, that's the guy they got to have. You're not getting a Sean Payton mm. and have Jerry. Skip, can you imagine... Miss Benson, Gail Benson, who owns the the, uh, uh, the Saints. Can you imagine her giving the injury report after the game or discussing the game before Sean Payton? Yeah. Can you imagine that, Skip? Can you imagine Bob Kraft, Mr. Nope. Kraft, giving the injury report or discussing the game before Bill Belichick? Yeah. That's what. That's why he's the guy. Mm-hmm. That's why Dave Campo. That's why Barry Switzer. That's why Chan Gailey. That's why Wade Phillips. That's why they were the head coaches and not a Jimmy Johnson, not a Bill Parcells, because they ain't having it. You know what Jerry once told Vanity Fair magazine, this was a long time ago, but he said, I could coach the you-know-what out yes. of this team. Oh, yeah. Maybe he should try it now, no. right? You don't, yeah. you don't want that because then, because yeah. then, see, right now, Skip, he could like, all I'm doing, I'm paying everybody. Yeah. It's his fault. See, if he coached the team, who can he blame then, Skip? Because mm. not only is he paying the players, drafting the players, he's coaching the players. Yep. So Jerry got to have somebody to blame. You want to know the truth about motivation for this team? Because it's you, even you admit it's a very talented football team. Yeah, very team. talented. No question. And they got two uh, star tackles. Both mm-hmm. could be out. But the point is, you, you know what almost needs to happen to overcome Jason Garrett? What? They need to go lose at the Jets. Because then they hit bottom. You, and you're then, trying to get Jason Garrett fired. No, for no, real. I'm just, I'm just saying. That's when the football team says, "What are we doing?" They get angry internally, not because of his motivation, because Dak and Zeke are in there just going crazy in the locker room, hellfire and damnation speeches. And then they come back to play the Eagles, and they beat the Eagles, and then they're off to the races. Skip. That's how this. You're team, trying to get Jason Garrett fired. Well, well, again, I remind you, they were three and five last year, and they proceeded to go win at Philadelphia, and then just start beating everybody. Beat Philly twice. But Skip, you can't lose mm-hmm. to a, a winless team, mm. a team that's a bottom feeder that has a 31st or 30th ranked yeah. offense, and then think you're going to keep your job with that team. I just don't think he would get fired in the middle of the year. I just don't. If he if he lose three in a row mm-hmm. and one of them to the Giants, J- Jerry I mean the would Jets. Say, well, me. we're three and three, and we got Philly coming to our place. That's what he would say. I think Rod Marinelli would be the head because that's I think that he's probably the only guy that has head coaching experience on yeah. that staff. I think Chris Richard could be a head coach. Yeah, I, I think yeah. so too. But I think he would turn it over to, to Marinelli because he's already been a coach, mm. although not a not, very good one. Not going to happen. <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah, oh, it's not going to happen because you feel very comfortable that you're going to be the hapless Jets team, right? You feel good about that? No, no, I'm I'm serious when I tell you I, I wouldn't hate it if they lost to the Jets yeah. because I know that could just relight the fire. No, you want to come in here Monday and pound the table because Dak will have a good game mm. because they'll be the overman team. You make you excuses about, already? No, 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 no. Okay. Well, I would. Uh, Mm. When, when he gonna put some? What did he do against New Orleans? Mm. What did he do? At a QBR of seventy seven. It's really good. I told you. Mm. I'm not adding QBR back to my. No, menu. Michael no. Gallup, half of an Amari Cooper. I thought he played really well. Oh, so game. how was Amari Cooper on Sunday? Mm. He was half. He looked good. Had two guys over hundred yards. High look. Got healthy. Three picks. Yeah. Here we go. This one, minute. one pick. So, Three. Yep. And Am- Amari L. had a pick, and the refs had a pick. L. That's what happened. Eddie took it. You L. know it. L. Yeah. <laughs> you, you want skip? Do you want? You, since you You're like that, you do know, you I want, want that <laughs> same energy on Monday? That's what I want. No, no, oh, not man. against the Jets. Yeah. I've heard you that ain't before. get no energy on the Jets. You know, I wish I could take your energy and pour it in Jason Garrett. <laughs> no. On a, on a Sunday morning. Only they had morning. that every day. Yeah. No. Yes. You ain't get no energy against the Jets. Your cowboy hate could turn into cowboy motivation. Fuel them, Shannon. You should just keep doing this. No. Yeah. We hire. Are you to give a pregame speech? No. Yeah, please? No. Probably yeah. not. Eagles, well, I've already booked. The Eagles got him. Eagles got him. <laughs> yeah. No mercy.
The Redskins guys have moved on from Jay Gruden, but it does not mean they're ready to start rookie quarterback Dwayne Haskins. Yesterday, interim head coach Bill Callahan said the plan is to still develop the rookie QB and not rush him onto the field. Team president Bruce Allen also spoke to the media yesterday and feels confident where his organization is at. Take a listen. You know, the culture is actually damn good. These people care. We have a very young core of players that we have brought in here who are accustomed to winning. If you look at the record of these guys, they're accustomed to winning. They want to win. Okay, Shannon, are you surprised the Redskins aren't playing Haskins? I'm surprised that Bruce Allen said the culture is actually good. I'm not surprised. But it's not good. Uh, but I've known him for a long time. He's paid a lot of money to be the owner's mouth. Oh, okay. A whole lot of So in other words, he paid a lot of money to yes, lie. Okay, yes, okay, 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 I give you. Okay. Yeah, I, I am surprised, Skip. Um, they, they selected this young man number one overall through what, 15th pick? Yep. The 15th overall. Yep. But from all indication, this was a Daniel Snyder pick and not a, we heard. a Jay Gruden pick. Okay, so why isn't he playing Sunday? I think... If he's not playing after you fired the head coach, it tells me he's not close. Now, it's going to be I, – I, and Bill Callahan took over the head coach because he's has, he has head coaching experience. He's yep. taken a team to the Super Bowl, the Raiders. We know they lost to mm -hmm. the, uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks. But, Skip, if it's me, I think they got a bye week in about three or four weeks with the instructions. Bill Callahan. Yep. Coming out of that bye, Dwayne Haskins, Haskins needs to be the starting quarterback of this football team. I need to see what I have. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand Jay Gruden, Skip. Jay Gruden's like, my job is to win games. Not to be, you know, developing players is one thing, Skip, but I'm trying to win. At the end of the day, Jay Gruden really has an obligation to the other 40 guys in that locker room to try to put the best players on the, not like, oh, we take them, selected him in the first round and he needs to play. Guys want to win. And if they think Dwayne Haskins is the best guy for the job, they want him in there. That's what Jay, that's what Jay Gruden is like. I believe right now, um, Case Keenum is the best guy. Sure. Well, Keenum got oh, hurt. Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. Yeah. But yep. moving forward, basically, I believe they've given Callahan four weeks to get this young man ready to play. And coming out of the bye week, he needs to be the starter. Yep. He needs to get more reps because it's hard for me to believe, Skip, he wasn't even getting any first team reps. He was just running scout team stuff. Well, for people at home at scout team, Skip, they draw the stuff up on the card. They circle where they want you to throw the ball to. Yeah. They don't even tell you no play, Skip. They just like, here's the card. Design. Yeah. You looking at the card like this here. And they got the guy, and they got the guy circled with a red, throw him the ball. Mm. Or they got the guy circled, throw, throw that guy the ball. What is mm. that? How's that helping him get ready to run your offense? He needs to hear plays being called. Yep. He needs to go through a progression. If you're telling him where to throw the ball, how is he reading anything, Skip? So he's never going to be able to, to progress and be able to understand what he needs to understand. Mm. But Bruce Allen, <clears throat> and let me tell you why you can't establish a culture. Because your owner won't let a coach stay in there long enough. Now, Jay Gruden overstayed his welcome. He did. Because the hell, he wasn't winning anything. Yep. But your owner meddles too much. Because he wants to be Jerry Jones. Mm. That's his problem right there. That's true. If, if, if he would let, be Daniel Snyder and not want to be Jerry Jones, uh, I guess D.C. Theoretically, D.C. is the South because it falls below the Mason-Dixon line. Yep. Okay. But if, if, I it's hear like that. A weird mix <laughs> it is. It, is. it, it, it yep. is, Skip. Yep. But if he would stop trying to be Jerry Jones, mm -hmm. everything would probably be a lot better. But he wants to meddle like Jerry. And so he hadn't had this. He just isn't as public as Jerry No, is. but trust me, mm -hmm. he's meddling mm -hmm. as much as Jerry, if not more so. The only difference, like you said, Jerry is public about his. Mm -hmm. He tried to hide behind the scenes. Well, it's not me lying. It is you. <laughs> <laughs> True. So I must admit, because I keep reading, that Daniel Snyder fell in love with Dwayne Haskins and likes him on and off the field because he was a longtime Redskin mm -hmm. fan as a kid. And so I thought, well, this, right down the road from what it's, this is a done deal. Yeah. I just thought, well, here they go with the Dwayne Haskins era. Right. And I was pretty surprised that, wait a second, Bill Callahan says, not yet? Really? Mm -hmm. So I did see a good quote on ESPN.com from Jay Gruden yesterday, and I think this sums it up because I kept reading, and I don't know this for a fact, but that Gruden wasn't completely sold on Dwayne Haskins. Mm -hmm. But Gruden said, until he gets really comfortable, talking about Dwayne, it's for his own good. If I didn't like him, I'd put him out there right now. Right. So he's just saying, I think the world of him, because right. he he's a great kid. Right. He's great. He's fun to be around, right. great charisma. Right. And yet, 
when we have seen him in the preseason games and then against Daniel Jones, he got thrown into the fire for a right. good portion of that game. Right. He was really having a hard time. Right. And so you, so and I think he's not ready. And the thing is, Skip, normally what happens is, is that the Giants, when they prepared, they thought they were going to see Case Keenan for the entirety of the game. Yep. So they have no scheme. So what happens if Daniel Jones come in? Sometimes when you see guys come in and out, they're like, okay, we got a package for Lamar Jackson in yep. case he comes in for Joe Flacco mm -hmm. when Flacco was there. Yep. They had no packages. So this is his opportunity. They're unprepared for him yep. to show him something. Hmm. And now, he showed him okay. Now back to your bigger point. Daniel Snyder, I'm gonna speak as a Cowboy fan. I miss the Cowboy Redskin rivalry because it's no more at no. the moment. And the reason it's no more is because of that owner. Mm -hmm. This is his 21st season yeah. in Washington. They've won in his 21 years, two playoff games out of seven. They're two and five in the wow. postseason. Mm -hmm. Last time they won a playoff game, you might remember this was 2005 at John Gruden's Tampa Bay mm -hmm. with Joe Gibbs as the head coach. Yep. Mark Brunel was the Redskin quarterback, and he completed seven of 14 passes that day for 41 yards, and they won the game. Don't ask me how, yeah. but it was tedious to watch because I remember watching it, and that's the last time they won a playoff game. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many games I attended and covered at old RFK. Did you ever play I there? I played there, I did. Okay. And I used to call it the rickety field for mm -hmm. knuckleheads. Yep. There. You know, because it was crazy. <laughs> it was. The stands would it sway. Sh it sway. Sh yeah. You know, it was, mm -hmm. you couldn't get a ticket. They were out of their minds. Yeah. It was a blood rivalry with the Dallas Cowboys. They hated Dallas. Yeah. And it was Dallas week in Washington. And I used to think, it just might be the best NFL town in America. Mm -hmm. And now you can't give away tickets. Right. The, the Patriots went there last week and, and the Patriot fans took over the stadium. Yeah, said it felt like a home game. What? Because of this guy, Dan Snyder. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you can't fire the owner. Right. And you can't, you know, you can't, if I can use that term, you can't impeach the owner. So, no. you, so it's not like a public job where you can unelect, right. you know, you, right. he, he has to run for reelection. Mm -hmm. So you're stuck with this guy. Yep. And he keeps Bruce Allen to be his mouthpiece. Correct. And now they're going to go into the Dwayne Haskins era. And I, I just, I, I don't see an end to this. Right. I, I don't see it getting any better because what has he ever demonstrated that was right? In 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 house, he had Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan, right? Yeah, that is true. And, and, Let them and, go. and he had the guy that's at Green Bay, Lafleur. Yeah. Lafleur, yeah. Lafleur. All them guys. Yeah, I'm not sure about him yet. Yeah. But, but again, better than They've Jay Gruden. They all seem to be doing. Yeah. And, like, and look, better. and he he kept Jay Gruden. Okay. Now, just on balance, just for perspective, Jay Gruden did make one excuse that's valid. They have had 52 players on IR over the last two years. So they've had way more than their share of injuries. That is true. Is well, it you, just you like training a, staff and a strength okay, conditioning you program? You could be right. You could be right. But think they lost Alex Smith, and then, then this year they lost Jordan Reed. These are big right. pieces to their Oh, and Trent Williams have yet to report. Trent Williams hadn't even reported yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's hard to overcome that. But Jay Gruden had plenty of chances, and he won one playoff game. Or, yeah, he, no, he, no, he, he lost. lost it. It was the Kirk Cousins versus Aaron Rodgers right. game at Washington. Mm -hmm. So he got to one playoff right. game. Well, uh, so he's gone. I don't know. You know, like uh, I think it was ESPN. Uh, maybe it was Ed uh, Werder who speculated oh. uh, Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin. Huh. Okay. Well, why would Mike Tomlin want to inflict this upon him? Yeah. Why would I leave? Wants to work. Why it's, would it's I what leave? you just said about working for Jerry Jones? Yeah. This is even worse. To yes. Me. The Steelers, I mean, the Steelers ha have had three coaches in the last 50 years. Yeah. They stay out of your way. Yeah. And Come on. So why would you subject well, why yourself would you to that? Even start. What, what, what good would it do you? What, what would you be able to prove there? What, so what I got? Oh, I got five. I got total control. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. At, at least Jerry Jones is up front about having Thank his you. input. Uh, yeah. yeah. This guy's like Machiavelli. You know, yeah. he's behind the scenes. <laughs> yes. It's all clandestine. Yes. And you, you, you're never. Oh, no, such and such is making that move. No, he's not. Mm. That's a Daniel Snyder move. Okay. <sighs> I don't know. It's not going up. No good. But I, I miss the Redskins as a Cowboy fan. I believe that. Well, it ain't, it's not coming back anytime soon. Okay. Oh, so you finally admit it. Mm. But remember when Dak was 6-0, mm. he said, oh, the Redskins, that's a bit of rivalry. Mm. It's going to be you something. So really now you told the truth. Like no, it, it, it is a rivalry. I think the players still take it seriously. Mm. The fans don't. No. No mercy. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers reeled off 24 straight points in Dallas before the Cowboys could come up with an answer. Rodgers only put up 10 more points in the remaining quarter and a half, but the QB still thinks the win was one of his better games. Take a listen for yourself. 
I knew it was going to be tough without Devontae, but um, you know I felt good about uh, the way I was moving in the pocket and extended plays and um, you know, taking care of the ball. I had a couple good throws, kind of get going. Um, didn't really make any stupid mistakes, and, and obviously Jonesy run the ball helped uh, helped out a lot. It's not the greatest uh, statistical game for myself, but I feel like I played my best game of the season. Um, you know the way that I was moving and and seeing things. Um, you know, I've, I've accomplished a lot statistically in this league. Uh, I just want to win now. Well, Shannon, do you agree with Rodgers? I do. Mm. Um, because I thought he made some great throws and he never put the ball mm -hmm. in harm's way. Skip, you know, sometimes great quarterbacks, the greatest thing they can do is have an understanding of the game and what it requires of them. And a lot of times when we hear the term game manager, we're like, oh, my God, that, that means he can't do it. Tom Brady is the greatest, you know, people say he's the greatest quarterback, and I'm not going to be up here today and try to argue against that. But if you look at him in the Super Bowl that they lost, Skip, he's like, you know what? Our defense don't have it today. I got to get into a shootout. So I got to throw the ball, and I got to be accurate. 5-0-5, hmm? they lose the ball game. Fast forward a year. Okay, this is going to be a nip and tuck ball game. I can't be throwing the ball all over the yard. I can't put the ball in harm's way. He made the mistake the first drive. Mm -hmm. And then he says, you know what? It's going to be a game where I'm going to have to be really, really accurate. We're going to have to rely on the run game. Mm -hmm. He turned into a game manager. It wasn't about him winning the MVP at that point. Mm. It was about him winning the ball game and him understanding that. Aaron Rodgers in that ball game says, you know what? This is not the day where I try to throw for 350. Mm. This is not the day I try to throw for 400. This is the day that I stay out of the way. Aaron Jones, bring us home. I'm going to make the throws that I need to make because I'm well capable of doing that. And in the process of doing that, he became a game manager mm. and they won the game. So many times we see guys, they get caught up. I'm great. I'm historically, I'm all time great. I need to be great every game. No, you do not. Mm. There will be times that the game does not call. Excuse me. Put this down. Mm. There'll be times that the game does not call for you to do that, Skip. And Aaron Rodgers understands that. And that's what the great players do. They understand, let, let the game dictate mm -hmm. what I need to do, what I need to be, and then we'll go from there. Yep. I thought he was right. Now, had that ball not gotten intercepted in Philly, I believe he said Philly was the game because his defense clearly didn't have it that night. Mm. 176 on the ground, uh, walking to him, had three touchdown passes, and he's a throwaway from winning that ball game. Mm. I believe he was. And he failed to see a wide open receiver on the last Skip, this is not your turn to talk. I didn't ask you well, anything. No, you you weren't going to note that. I don't want You're you going to sweep that under your little rug over there. <laughs> if, he had, if he had got that tenth ball into the end zone, I believe considering. Well, sure, that would have been by far. Yes, because he was needed. Mm. Sunday, he was only needed to make a handful of throws. Mm -hmm. He made those throws, and even without his best receiver, he got a, mm. he went on the road and they won a game. Mm. So I agree with Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Did you just refer to Aaron Rodgers' game Sunday as a game manager game? Yes. Really? Yeah. Wow. Aaron Rodgers, the greatest thrower of the football ever, had to turn into game manager. To like Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Oh, like Tom Brady in the Super oh, Bowl. Okay. That's what he was, game manager. Yeah, huh, yeah. Interesting. Sonny Michelle brought it home. That running game brought it home for the Super Bowl. <sighs> so he got the dub. You know what struck me about this quote that we just saw? What? Come from Aaron Rodgers' lips. It has come to this for Aaron Rodgers, oh who's in decline in no, his career. Not, yeah. he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. He had to tell the media, this is Aaron Rodgers, a cinch Hall of Famer, first ballot Hall of Famer. I, I felt like this was my best game of the season. Mm -hmm. What great quarterback needs to tell the media that you felt like it was your best game of the season? You don't need to say that. Yeah. That would be for other people to seize upon and leap to? No, because you already said, remember you said he's in decline. Mm. You just said it. So, so he needed to... So is he feeling the pressure of that? Is ain't he, no pressure. Keep I've, winning. I've called him the thinnest skin. He's the LeBron James of the <laughs> National Football <laughs> League. Thinnest skin. Whatever. So his skin's getting even thinner at age, what is he up to now, 35 he now? He's 35. Yeah. So that that was a thin skin quote. I, I felt like it was my best game of the year. Are you having trouble over there? Are you? Yeah, Jenny's trying to knock my fan down. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. Well, I know you're <laughs> Once in a while. A sweaty over there, but it's okay. <laughs> Turn it your way. So it, it also struck me as odd that, that he would refer to this game as his best game because, boy, he got quiet in the second half. It got real quiet for Green Bay because no, here didn't. came Dak Prescott. And by the way, just statistically, if I can throw this out, if we do total pass yards, including sacks in the second half, 
Aaron wound up with a grand total of 77 yards, and Dak Prescott wound up with 320. So 320 to 77. That was a real quiet no, second Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Now, what, what, what we play for? Mm. We playing for stats or we playing for dubs? Mm. I'm just saying that was his best game of the year. Yeah, but Skip, he told you mm. when he protected the ball. Remember now, you said what changed the momentum of that ball game mm -hmm. was the Cowboys looked like they were going for an opening touchdown. Mm -hmm. And a turnover changed the complexion of the ball game. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine you being in a situation that the, cat, the, the Packers are in. Mm -hmm. They're clearly in the catbird seat, mm -hmm. which is a favorable position. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Yep. So what the worst thing that could happen for the Packers and Aaron mm -hmm. Rodgers? Mm -hmm. Strip sack, mm -hmm. an interception. He didn't put the ball in harm's way. Mm. He didn't force anything. I'll give you that. And he made a couple of classic Aaron Rodgers flick throws yep. where the footwork is just, just extraordinarily mm -hmm. wrong, mm -hmm. where it's off, off foot, you know, yeah. where you're, you're wrong footing throws and he just, he just flicks it yeah. and it gets there. So yeah. way to go. I'll yeah. give you a couple of those. Yeah, that's, uh, but, but his total QBR is 49. Hey, what was that? Zero to 100. Dax was 27. Okay. Bad game, but he still leads the whole league. In no, QBR. no, he didn't lead that game. No. Okay. But it's 49 to 27. And Dax still leads Aaron in the four game cumulative QBR that they've amassed. Oh, but he, but he's coming back. Now he's in the 80s. Okay. He's coming back down to earth, you know, because yep. you made one point, he was 99. Yeah. Okay. So 49, it's, it's one tick below average. So, so what is 27? So Aaron Rodgers is calling a QBR of 49. He said, I know it wasn't the best statistical game, but it was my best game of the year. Okay, well, I'll give you that. If that's where you are in your career it's right now, you well, it skip. is. Skip. It has what, come what you, to this for not, Aaron Rodgers. It has not come to Way this. Way to go. At the end of the day, his job as the quarterback is to win the game. Hmm. I'm sure if they needed a mount of drive, if because we saw this in the, in the playoff game, mm -hmm. when Dak got the game time field goal, what did Aaron Rodgers do? Be Aaron Rodgers and go down, put his field goal kicker in field goal range, mm -hmm. and get the game winning field walk off. Yep. I'm sure if Aaron would have needed that on Sunday, mm. he could have done that. But the most important thing is for a quarterback is to understand what does this game call for me mm -hmm. today? Mm. Today, uh, Sunday's game called for Aaron Rodgers to not put the ball in harm's way. He needed to make three or four, maybe five throws mm. to keep drives alive, mm. but not put the ball in harm's way and not get a strip sack. He did that. Mm. Aaron Jones, the mm. running game, was going to uh, um, be uh, heavily involved in whether or not they win or lose the ball game, Skip. Mm. You have to understand that. Your mm. guy put the ball in harm's way. Mm. My guy did not. My team won. Your team lost. Mm. I'm happy. You're sad. <laughs> the end. So, quarterback's best friend, running game, and... Aaron Rodgers wasn't the star of the game, but Aaron Jones was. Yes, yeah, sure. Because he, in, he had a total of 109 rush yards and 75 pass yards. Wow, that's a lot of combined yards. Yeah. That's 184. That's pretty good, yeah. right? And in the first half, he had 66 rushing and 48 catching. So he went over 100 all-purpose yards in the first half. Yeah. And that's when most of the damage was done by the running back. And your guy, success is tied to the running back, hmm. who did not go anywhere in a hurry, hmm. therefore you lost. Hmm. Again, under 75 yards for Ezekiel Elliott, Dak hmm. Prescott now is one and nine. Hmm. He's won nine games hmm. in which Ezekiel Elliott has rushed for fewer than 75 hmm. yards. All those games, you're talking about for the last 10 games, Dak Prescott took off. Look at Zeke's rushing numbers hmm. in those last 10 games that Dak Prescott hmm. numbers Took off. Hmm. He took off. You need both in, in tandem. Well, all I'm saying is your guy. Can, well, hello. If your guy, if you say, if your guy is what you say he is, mm -hmm. he got to be able to deliver us sometime yep. when Zeke is not there. Huh? Well, Zeke wasn't there in the second half, and he threw for three twenty. And what did it get you? Okay. Jerry it Steel's, almost got you the greatest comeback. No, it did not. No, it did not. No, skip. And by the way, Aaron Rodgers' last four drives in that game were punt, punt, field goal, punt, and the field goal came after the outrageously blown non-call, which led to no first down for Green Bay, and they got a gift field goal because of the return. They just said well, they went three and out, but they just kicked the field that's goal. That's what okay? you do, Skip Bayless. So that's all you do in the uh, punt, punt, effectively going nowhere on the field goal and punt. That's the end of the game for Aaron Rodgers. You, so I don't think he exactly staved off the momentum. Well, think about this here. If you go back to the Super Bowl in which the Patriots had the greatest Super Bowl come from behind victory ever, mm -hmm. Matt Ryan got a 22-yard completion to Julio Jones. Mm -hmm. If they had gone nowhere, 
The guy comes in, kicks a field goal, they're up 11, and who knows what happens. Okay. But instead, they go backward. Mm. They move out of field goal range, mm. and we all know what happens after mm. that. Who was the coordinator that day? Again. Who was the coordinator? Kyle Shanahan. Thank you. And he's the golden boy last night, but he wasn't the golden boy that night. Again, yeah. under, but understanding, Matt Ryan, you would think as the MVP, mm -hmm. you know you can't take a sack. Mm. That's, that's, that's quarterback number one rule. Mm. We're in field goal range. I'm not taking a sack here. Yep. Aaron Rodgers understood that. Mm. He didn't take a sack. He didn't put the ball in harm's way. Interception, strip sack. We, us, Green Bay, huh. got a win. We. You got a loss. Okay. Sad. The end. Okay. Well, we'll see how it turns out in the biggest picture. Oh, you already know. Yep. You already know. A lot of small pitches. I'm good. A lot of small pitches, mm -hmm. a lot of small L's yep. will turn out into a beautiful mosaic. Mm -hmm. You yep. haven't brought up the Super Bowl in a while, Skip. Mm. So I don't uh, yeah, it ain't happened. What, what is Fox Bay saying now? Mm. What Fox Bay, what's the most likely matchup right now? So I, hope, we, I hope it says it Dallas up. has no chance. No, 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 no. I week, love it. Like oh, no oh, oh, last week, you, oh, did you also have last week? Last week, he's right down on his paper. You, yeah. you, you right down. Fox yeah. Bitch said. Well, yeah. Yeah. Most All of them said. Yeah. A yeah. bunch of them well, said. Well, well, I don't, I don't yeah. know who said it. I don't know yeah. who said what. Well, but what are they saying right football now? Football Focus had Dallas ranked number one last week. Where they got All them the teams. I don't know. Where they got them I haven't looked. Well, I don't well, care. Well, no, you, you, you I care. told you. You well, brought it up last week, but okay. now you don't care. I got care. Coach Clapp. I need motivation. Hold I need up. L's. I need early season L's. Hold up. So did it? So you know, you become really good at the first three quarters and no fourth quarter and the first fourth of the season or four. No, no, no. I'm just asking. So nobody took into account yeah. that Jason Garrett was their coach mm. the first quarter of the I season. I told you, I've, every time I make a pick, I say, in spite of him. Mm -mm, mm -mm, yep. mm -mm. Okay. I ain't gonna let you do this. We're good. Sorry, that one's my fault, Skip. I brought up the Super yep. Bowl. That one's on me. My bad. No mercy. So guys, it went from bad to worse last night for Baker in the 31-3 loss against the 49ers. The second-year quarterback was 8 for 22 for 100 yards, committing three turnovers with a QBR of just one. But the rough night for Mayfield began prior to kickoff. Niners All-Pro defensive back Richard Sherman said Baker was disrespectful from the start. Sherman said, quote, What's amazing and annoying was him not shaking hands at the beginning. That's some college bleep. It's ridiculous. We're all trying to get psyched up, but shaking hands with your opponent, that's NFL etiquette. And when you pull Bush League stuff that's disrespectful to the game, and believe me, that's going to get us fired up. So, Shannon, do you agree that Baker was being disrespectful to the game? Yeah, I do believe he's being disrespectful. I believe he said things that were disrespectful. I don't think he has a whole lot of respect for a guy that, that played this game. It's, it's always bothered me, Skip, and it seems to be these new age guys. They hate losing more than anybody else in the history of the game. Oh, I hate losing so much, man. Losing. Ooh, bruh. There have been 25,000 men play the NFL in a 100-year history. You're not the only one that hates to lose, mm. okay? Ba He's such a competitor. Baker Mayfield is not the most fierce competitor in NFL history. Mm. All of these guys are competitors. All of these guys have had to fight to overcome something mm. at one point of their life or another, Skip. And it didn't necessarily have to be on the football field. There is something in your life you've overcome. Everybody is a competitor. Baker Mayfield's the most competitive. That's that fire. No. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, and it's starting to happen. Guys are going to go out of their way to punish Baker Mayfield. Yep. Skip, like I said, guys want to get Tom Brady. Yes, they want to beat Tom Brady's team. They want to sack him. But they have the utmost respect for him because he has the utmost respect for the game, and he respects, respects the history of the game and the players that came before him. Baker Mayfield, I'm Baker Mayfield. Take it or leave it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're going to take it. They're going to humble you, bro. Mm -hmm. They're going to, they're going to, they're gonna, I tell you, give him a couple of years and he going to, he going to tote, for lack of a better word, he'll tote the company line. Yep. He'll be just like all the other quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, he played, we played a great game. Those are great guys. That's a great team over there. All this tough talk, this brash bravado, because guess what? <laughs> You're not in Oklahoma, and you're not playing TCU, mm. and you're not playing Kansas, and you're not playing Kansas State. Because everybody in this league right here, mm. everybody in this league has the ability to make everybody else in this league look foolish. Mm -hmm. And if you think for one second, Baker Mayfield, you're unique, mm. you're not. So you're going to find out the hard way, but you keep that same, like you say, keep that same energy, mm -hmm. keep that same energy. They'll show you. Okay, everything you just said is dead on true, 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 true. 
I'm still having a hard time drawing a conclusion on this because I need Baker's side of this story. Well, Everything you said about him is right. I just reached okay. out to Richard, and I'm waiting okay. on him to, to call okay, to take me back. Oh, okay, good. Okay, but that that's still not unless there's some backstory. Well, because I'm because I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying to get because and Steve would say we're trying to find the the coin toss at the beginning of the game and we can't find it anywhere. Okay, hmm. because it's possible given Baker's over emotional personality that something happened before mm-hmm. kickoff during warmups. Maybe they clashed during warmups and Baker said basically screw you and, and just wouldn't shake his hand or it could have been somebody else's hand. I don't know. I have a feeling something transpired to spark this Yeah. because I bring back up that Baker was the one who got offended by the Kansas Jayhawk captains mm-hmm. at Kansas, what are we going back, two years yeah, ago. Two. Not shaking his hand. When he extended his hand before kickoff, they refused to shake it. And they were a bad football team. And he's like, oh, okay, that's how we're going to play it today. And then after they laid it on Kansas, he's out of the game, fourth quarter, and he gets into it with some of the Jayhawk fans in the stands because it's at Kansas. And then he signals across the field by grabbing his crotch saying, you know, you know, you won't shake my hand. This is what you get from me. Right. Okay, so so he he was the one who got offended by a non handshake to start with. Right. So would he then come full circle and not shake for no reason, not shake the 49er captain's hands? But this is your opportunity, Skip. I've been in the I've been in the coin toss. I've been in the coin toss when we've been going back and forth, yeah. and I reach in. Sure. Talk, okay. that, talk that ish now. Okay, I got it. This I is your it. opportunity I mean, to talk way, what you was talking all week. Okay. Now is the time to talk it. Okay, that's the way this game is played. Yes. But, but something had to transpire because I don't think Baker is built to not shake hands before kickoff. And nobody in however many games he's played, you know, two-thirds of last year and the first five games of this year, nobody's accused him of not shaking hands before mm-hmm. kickoff before mm-hmm. that I'm aware of, right? I haven't yeah. seen anything. Okay, now. What, what do I know about Richard Sherman? I have a small bit of personal background with mm-hmm. him because back in March of 2013, he came on our show on ESPN and his people told our producer he just wanted to talk off-season football, that he didn't want to do anything controversial, and he just went right after me for reasons I have no idea of to this day. Mm-hmm. And we've invited him to come on this show as we invited him to come back on that show and explain himself because we were just blindsided right. by it. But the point is, Richard is very smart, but he can also be very over emotional. Mm-hmm. And he's got as big a chip on his shoulder mm-hmm. as Baker has had on his shoulder. So I'm, I'm not completely trusting him after the game because he even called out the whole 49er media after the game and said, hey, I don't want anybody to change their preseason predictions. You know, it's that same, yeah. have that yeah. same energy yeah. all, all the way yeah. through. Yeah. So, so he was calling them out for doubting the 49ers. Right. So he was in a mood because he had had a big pick right. early in the game. He dominated the yeah. game on okay. Monday night. Okay. Everybody's yeah. watching. So he was pretty full of himself. Mm-hmm. So I want to be sure that that something didn't transpire between him and Baker that precipitated this non-handshake that he's accusing uh, Baker of. And again, the other 49er captains also said that he wouldn't shake hands, except George Kittle said, well, he gave me a little little yeah. hand slap, yeah. you know. And, and, my, and my, my, my thing is, Skip, I, I, like I said, I don't mind the trash talk. I mean, we guys trash talk and say things during the week, but when we come out to the coin toss, Oh, I got you. I will keep my, I will keep my energy. Yeah. We're going to see if you're going to be talking okay. like you was All talking right. during the week okay. but after this game. That's fine. I got it. That's the way you do business. Yes. That's the way this game yes. is played at yes. this level. But I think Baker knows that. Something is going on here, and I can't wait for Baker to either post on social or pull the Cleveland media together today to give them a little bit of But Skip, the thinks. one thing that you can't do, you can't be the one. You might think it. Like I said, you know, Jenny and I might have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Man, they they drafted that guy. Yeah. But you can't say that publicly. You be, yeah. you better you better respect these guys in this mm-hmm. game. Just so oh oh that's the way oh that's the way you feel, huh? Yep. Okay, so you think because you're number one overall draft pick, you better your knowledge of football is so vast now you can cast dispersions on someone else no. taking some our quarterback. Okay, we're gonna show you. Mm-hmm. Now we're about to make you look, and people go like, man, they should have took such and such number one overall yep. instead of Baker Mayfield. I got it. Skip guys go out of their way. When you are not respectful to the game, yep. there are guys that's in this game that play this, that's not that's not as great as some of the greats, mm-hmm. but they have a healthy respect. Yep. They appreciate, they understand the game of the guys that came before and laid the foundation. Mm-hmm. This game has always been played physically, and it's always been played respectfully. Yep. And if you don't respect one or the other, 
Mm-hmm. There are guys that'll put you in your place and make you respect both of them. Yep. And Baker's going to have to find out that's the hard way. But so he's going to, if you play this game long enough, it will humble you. Mm. He is fearlessly irreverent about everything. Mm-hmm. But I do think there's some traditions he does respect at his core. You've been around him enough. that I have, I, yeah. I, I think he does respect the game. Something's happening here. I want to know the full story and the backstory. Man, them, them, them college, that college rivalry stuff, yeah. you steal somebody's mascot and all kind yeah. of stuff. You steal somebody's flag and you go paint yeah. the dorm. But That's, he gets it. That, he that, gets it. it. He does. I think I'm curious, though. If he should just take the unbaker approach to this and just apologize, just don't. We don't need a response. Just say, "Hey." But but see, here's the thing with his apology: because he apologized before and say there was zero sincerity, uh, people's going to be hard pressed. See, he loses okay. the benefit of the doubt now. So to see, you, it doesn't matter see, if he if, apologizes. See, Skip, if he just kept his mouth shut, okay, I apologize. Why would you apologize, Skip? And say, "Well, they asked me to apologize, okay, but there was is, zero this sincerity." Is back for the Kansas incident right. at yeah. Oklahoma, right? So I'm how saying I, I'm a college football player in my administration, my athletic right. director, my head coach said, well, you need to apologize right. for this one. So he wasn't sincere. His right. heart wasn't in it. Mm-hmm. But Jenny suggesting that his heart would be in this and he would take it upon himself, not because Freddie Kitchens told him. How do we know that? How, how do we know that? The, how do we know that the Browns didn't ask him to do that? I don't know. I think we're the, the story's still premature. I think this is just now. It's hard. For me, it, it's hard. For, it's so Sherm didn't make this up with the media. No. The media must have picked them. He, they, so he, he said that keep that same energy when you pick the, the finished yes. fourth or third. Right. Yeah. If, they, if he'd have picked them fourth, because so, uh, if, if he had picked them first, mm-hmm. he wouldn't have said that. Yeah. So it's hard for me to believe of all the things that transpired, he's going to take a shot at Baker Mayfield mm-hmm. about this situation. He played bad enough. Why would I pile on about him not shaking hands at the coin toss? That's a good question. I don't know. We're going to talk about it. It wasn't captured on videotape before, so nobody seems to know. Obviously, they didn't make a thing about it on Monday Night Football. Mm -hmm. Like it was a pregame beef that that was captured. In in college, there are traditions like that. Skip, you remember in 87 when Miami, the Hurricanes, they walked out and was like, no, we're not being in the same room with Penn State. That ain't what we do. Skip, we get all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But the NFL is a different business. Yeah, uh, it is. We haven't gotten to the other big story, which is the Nick Bosa side of this, which we will get to. And I think it's it's safe to remind everyone that they had a little history from yeah. college. So maybe Bosa all week was talking to Sherman about who this guy was, and that carried over. No mercy. Before their first preseason game last night, Pelicans head coach Alvin Gentry was asked to compare Zion Williamson to LeBron James. But Gentry did not take the bait, saying that the comparison was unfair. Gentry said LeBron is one of a kind and no one can have an immediate impact like he did when entering the league. In the game, Zion looked good, racking up 16.7 rebounds and three assists in 28 minutes against the Hawks. So, Shannon, is the Zion-LeBron comparison fair? No, it's not a fair comparison, and nor should it be. And Alvin Gentry say, look, tamp these comparisons down. It's not fair. First of all, Skip, he's not ha- he doesn't have the expectation. Mm. The offense is he's not going to be in control of the offense. That'll be Lonzo. When Lonzo is not handling the ball, that'll be True Holiday. When Holiday isn't on the ball, that'll be Ingram. I don't see a scenario. LeBron James has been in the control mm-hmm. his entire 17-year yeah. career, and he will be that again. Yep. So the comparison is not there. Uh, I get it. Uh, he was. He's going to have highlight plays. Skip. The only comparison, they were number one overall draft picks. Uh, highly touted. Yep. Uh, the guys love these guys. Uh, everybody's going to love him because he's going to play hard nightly, Skip. He's going to have highlight plays. Yeah. The dunk right off the rip. First tomahawk. And then two hand. Mm-hmm. And blocking shots. He, so he's going to be spectacular. But Skip, he's not going to have the, the immediate impact. He's not going to be asked to do what LeBron was asked to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think it's a fair comparison to say Zion and LeBron James is on equal footing as rookies. To me, this is so totally unfair (laughs) that it's it's sickening because it's so wrong. (laughs) And it's become maybe a runaway media theme. Right. But I don't believe any player or any coach in this league is sitting back saying, man, I wonder if Zion's going to eclipse LeBron's early impact. <laughs> Nobody's thinking that. Right. That's just. Do people realize how good LeBron was, uh, Skip, early on? What was the the numbers at Sacramento that opened? Uh, well, yeah, like 20, 25? You know, he had like we had 25, 28, yeah. 5, and 5, 28, 8, yeah. and 5, or something like that. Okay. But he was spectacular right out the box. And to your, I, I've said this all along. He, he's a once a generation passer of yeah. the basketball. And even though Zion played point guard in high school right. and then grew, yeah. right. 
uh, th- th- come on, it, it's so wrong. It's, right. it's, it's so, it, it, it's, it sets <laughs> such a ceiling, so to speak, on what Zion can do right. early on because now we're in a different media age, social media age. Correct. It's going to be runaway highlight dunks. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's going to have those, and I think he's going to have them every night. Yes, he will. Because he is an exceptionally, rarely athletic leaper. But, you know, they, they force you in the NBA to have actual measurements. Did yeah. you see what his was? I told him, yeah, 6'6". Yeah, six, six. He's 6'6". Six, six. So I thought when I first was aware of Zion early last year, I thought he was 6'8"-ish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Duke listed him at 6'7", and now they are officially listing him, real listing him at 6'6". Six, six. Wow. Right. Charles Barkley once upon a time was, he was listed at 6'6", six, 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 but, six, but he was probably 6'4 and a half, half maybe, right. or something like that. And it Skip, it, if he has a career Charles Barkley had, no, no, Charles no. Barkley had a hell of a career. He, he just happened to be in the era with Michael Jordan. Yep. He caught the tail end of Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Yep. But Charles Barkley in any other era had a hell of a career. Yep. He's an MVP, took yep. a team to the finals. Right, and Charles had ball skills yes. I don't yet see in this kid. Yep where he could handle it, yeah. shoot it off the glass. Yeah. He started shooting threes late in his career. Yes. But the, the only similarity there is Charles was always a little too heavy, but but he was a leaper for his for yeah. his girth. And this kid here is a leaper also. Yeah. But Skip, he can't, 285, Skip, yeah. that's too heavy. I got it. Skip, he's going to have to. Skip, he's 285 at 19. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I'm him... I look, I understand New Orleans, the cuisine down there, but Skip. <laughs> but he looked a little I'm better fine. last I'm night. Finding, I'm, finding me, I'm finding me a personal chef. Be better. Let's just and be careful with those better. injuries. Knees won't take it. No. Joints won't take mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. No. Nah. Yep. A, a man that size, Skip, was, wasn't built to get up and down like he explosive, mm-hmm. jumping up and down like that. Yep. So I told you all along, his best attribute to me is his joy yes. that he plays it's with. Infectious. Because it, it's infectious. And it fuels him on a nightly mm-hmm. basis. I think he'll play as hard as anybody in the league no will question. play every dribble. Yes. Where every night he's going to bring whatever he's got that night. Mm-hmm. I hope he doesn't become jaded by the process because 82 is a lot of games. A lot of games. And after about 40 of them, he's going to probably hit the rookie wall and say, I have to play again tomorrow night. Yeah, that's two and a half times yeah. of college season. Yeah, that's it is. That's a good point. It adds up quick. Whew. Yeah. And it take, it's a lot of wear and tear, not yeah. only your body, but on your psyche. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you you know, you're a grown man, Skip. You got more. You got, Light bill, phone bill, gas bill. You got a cell phone you got to worry about now? Mm-hmm. I mean, not that he had to worry about that. Either. But I mean, yeah, I'm saying, I but I'm saying, he ain't got to go to study hall. He ain't got yep. class. You got, a, you got a job now. Yeah. I mean, a real job. You go to work, and now you got to, okay, what does he do with his, how does he manage mm-hmm. his time, Skip? Because, you know, in college, Skip, you got practice. Then we got study hall. You got training. Yep. You got all this. So your time is managed for you. Yep. Now, as an adult, you got a real job. You got to manage your own time. Mm-hmm. How does he? How does he do that? Yeah. Did you see yesterday he walked by Alvin Gentry, who was being interviewed by the ESPN reporter, and yeah. he said, they asking about me? Uh, yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. Because that's all they're going to ask about the whole year. Yes. It's going to be all about you. Yes. And everybody's going to want a piece of you and your time. And everybody's coming to see you. You. <laughs> and expectations are going through the roof like yes. you jump. Yes. And you're playing, I told you, this is LeBron's greatest degree of difficulty in his career because the West is so deep mm-hmm. now. And New Orleans is intriguing to me mm-hmm. because they got a shot to make the back end of the playoffs. Yeah. They could be the eighth seed. But that means expectations. Yes. So he can't just walk in the door and say, well, you know, because did LeBron make the playoffs his first year? No. Nope. nope, he did not. No. Okay. Hard. <sighs> it's very hard. Yeah. It, and that was in the East. In and the can East. you imagine the West? If the West is stacked, stacked, stacked. Stacked to the bottom. It's yes. as bottom heavy as it's ever been. Yes. Because teams like Sacramento or they got talent. Sacramento man. is better. Yeah. I mean Golden State, I mean Golden State, we think Golden State's gonna be good, mm-hmm. but I don't think Golden State's gonna finish in the top three, no. top four. I don't think so. So that means either. that means five through eight for them if they make the playoffs. Portland. Mm-hmm. Portland thinks they gotten better with Hassan Whiteside and Nurkic coming yeah. back. Utah got way better. Yeah. Denver's not going anywhere. Nope, and Houston thinks it's yeah, got a exactly. dynamic duo. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, you, and we saw Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> we saw Saturday oh, night. Oh, I know you were happy. <laughs> we saw Saturday night. It was Gil Bay. Preseason. You were the parade master yesterday, Ooh. right? How was it? It's only a matter yep. of time. Did it's only a matter of time. They present the trophy. The no, 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 no. We hold it off on that. Huh. We hold it off on that. Are you? Nah. Yeah. That's good. Boy, it looked like a championship team to me. It does. In the first half of the first of six preseason games. Skip. 
That huh, was just a little sample. Yep. That's what we do. We give you a sample. Okay. You taste it, you like it, you buy it. Okay. Mm. That was the sample. Really? How I'm, many people I'm, you think bought that? I'm not buying. You you all you ain't buying? Yeah. Okay. A lot we'll of gullible you, people. Yeah, you, you, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you old, start back eating sugar again. Yeah. Cause that's sweet what we got. Really? Yeah. yeah. You that's know the old P.T. Barnum line, sucker born every minute. Mm -hmm. He didn't actually say that, oh. but it's yeah. attributed to yeah. him. Is it? Sucker born every minute they know. in Laker Nation. Oh, right? is that Stop what it, it. is? Yeah. Mm. 56. Mm. Get my five cases ready. Really? Okay. 56 wins. You got a lot of cases back. You had oh. a, another one yesterday. Was it about the free throws? I don't yes, know. Yeah, 75%. Shannon, it was wishful thinking. 75%. I'm even worried about you about 75%. that 75%. He got this. I just, I don't know. You let me off the hook. I gave feels... you a huge break. Yeah, I know you <laughs> let me off the hook because I was going to go 80. Were you? Yeah. Well, last, you don't go 80. 75. last year you went 80 and he shot 67. Please don't like 80. I'm 75. trying to protect you here. If he shoots 75 or 76 percent, Whew, I'll be impressed. I, I'd be well, you got to be impressed. Yeah. You about to be impressed with this 25, 10, yeah. and 7. Yeah. Okay. I believe he will change his free throw routine 75 times during the season. As <laughs> long as they right. go in, I don't care what yeah. he does. Okay. He can throw but he can throw the Kareem hook shot from the yeah. free throw line for all I care. <laughs> as long as he makes 75% of them skip you know, At some point, he might, tr Rick might turn his back to the basket and shoot over his head. Hey, right? he can do Rick Barry, the granny yeah. shot. I don't, I don't care. Whatever he needs to do. Yes, as long granny as they go shot. in. Rick Barry's deadly. That's all you need. <laughs> hey. No mercy. 49ers defensive end Nick Bosa was chasing Baker Mayfield mm. all night. Bosa had two sacks as well as a forced and recovered fumble. At the end of the <clears> first <throat> half, Bosa chased Baker out of the pocket and forced the QB to commit intentional grounding. The former Ohio State Buckeyes celebrated the play by mocking Baker's infamous flag celebration from 2017. <gasps> you, you may remember this one. I can't forget it. Baker planted the Sooner flag at midfield after Oklahoma upset Ohio State in Columbus. And after the game, Bosa was asked about the celebration. Well, take a listen. Just wanted to get payback. Um, he, had, he had it coming. I was kind of trying to talk. I don't usually talk, but this game... He had it coming, so, but he didn't say one word back, so. What would you say, just an example? Oh, I was just screaming his name, like, Baker, <laughs> Baker, you good? Come on, pick it up, we want a challenge. Oh, man. He had been waiting <laughs> for that. Yeah. What we waiting. Say about keep that same energy. Hey, Couple keep years. that same energy. Okay, we are now joined Ooh. by Super Bowl champ and Fox Sports college <laughs> football analyst oh, Reggie man. Bush. I know you were liking that one. Yeah. I'm going to get your take, but I want to start with Skip on this one. Yeah, because I did not like it. I figured what? Skip was quiet over here. Mm. What did you make of it? I will qualify or disqualify <laughs> myself by saying, I was born and raised a University of Oklahoma football fan, so maybe I know too much about this, but I found Nick Bosa's imaginary flag plant to be weak and lame and <laughs> empty and useless because it proved nothing and it paid back nothing. They were up 21 to three. They had the poor Browns on the run. And the reason Baker ignored his Baker, Baker, <laughs> is because Baker knew that he was above it all because the true and the lasting payback came at The Ohio State University back in 2016, the night of September the 9th in the horseshoe, when Baker got the ultimate revenge and payback, because I'm gonna remind everybody, he was paying <clears throat> Nick Bosa and the Buckeyes back for what had happened 2016 in mm -hmm. Norman, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. when they went in there and absolutely annihilated Baker and the Sooners. It mm -hmm. was 45 to 24, that's mm -hmm. the year before. Yeah. And the Ohio State Buckeyes featuring Nick Bosa, who was a freshman then, but a really good player, mm -hmm. sure. they all got together on the sidelines and sang the Ohio State fight song. And Baker said after the game, I will never forget this mm. and we will get even when we get our chance. Mm -hmm. And one year later, mm. they got their chance. And what did Urban Meyer say after that game? No opposing quarterback has ever played a better game against me, Urban Meyer. He's mm -hmm. been around for a long time. You know him very well. Mm -hmm. You work mm -hmm. with him. Yep. You're on Fox. But no one had ever played a better opposing quarterback game than Baker did that, light, that night. <clears throat> 27 to 35 for 386, three touchdowns, no interceptions, and Oklahoma won 31 to 16. So to get even with them singing the fight song on OU's field, mm -hmm. <clears throat> he took the Oklahoma flag and went to midfield and planted it. And I'm making the case that that game and that flag plant 
got Baker Mayfield drafted number one overall because John Dorsey brought it up and said that was the highlight of his career and that energy that you want to talk about, that spirit, whatever that chip he on shoulder. definitely wanted the Heisman. Okay, well, okay, it helped. It helped, but it didn't hurt his Heisman right. because I thought at, at that moment maybe this will hurt his Heisman mm-hmm. because some of those old school voters would say that's a little out of line, that's a little over the top. But John Dorsey said that's the guy I want at quarterback. So I'm going to let Nick Bosa have his little personal moment (laughs) because Baker Mayfield has an all-time lasting moment at the horseshoe, and he will hang on to that. Thank you very much. Well, I hope this rivalry lasts a long time now because I want to see them keep going back and forth at it because that's what sports is about. That's what it's about. It, it, it's not a matter of if you get got. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of when you get got. And if you play in this league long enough, you will get got quite a few oh, times, no, especially true. playing quarterback mm-hmm. like Baker Mayfield, mm-hmm. like Baker Mayfield is. And so, I mean, the 49ers put on a football clinic last night. Mm-hmm. Beat them up in all phases of the game. Offense, defense, really controlled the line of scrimmage. Yep. But again, for Nick Bosa to play the way he did last night, plant your flag, young man. Okay. Plant your flag because enjoy your moment. you enjoy it because you earned it, right? Mm-hmm. And again, it's not a matter of if you get got, it's a matter of when. And it's funny because anytime people try to trash talk me on social media, they always bring up the infamous Sheldon Brown hit from the NFC Divisional game with the Eagles, right? Right. But that's what happens in this game. If you play long enough, it's going to happen. I'm lucky it only happened to me once. You got got one time. I got got one time. And and so when I look at that moment for Nick Bosa, I was applauding that because that was his moment to pay Baker Millfield back. Mm-hmm. And I hope he told who, Baker who had, Mayfield. He already paid Nick Bosa back. He already paid Nick Bosa place. back. Yeah. Right? So I hope he told him, right. hey, this don't just stop here. Okay. You're going to have to see me for the rest of my career. Mm-hmm. Because really, that's what football is about. And, um, I mean, they dominated that game yesterday. Oh. In, in a big way, dominated. Big way. Yeah. I liked it. I would have loved it mm-hmm. had he planted it in Cleveland. <laughs> if, if, Skip, this is not Neil Armstrong planting the flag right. on the moon. This is like Neil Armstrong right. planting the flag in Houston. Yep. It didn't have the same one, a small step for man, yep. a giant step mm-hmm. for mankind. Mm-hmm. But we get the why he did it. Yep. But if you listen to him, Skip, he's like, what happened to all that talking? Mm-hmm. Or you're like, what that energy mm-hmm. that you normally have? He says, I'm talking to Baker, and all of a sudden, he ain't got no chip on his shoulder. <laughs> oh, where did the chip go? Yeah. What is the competitive nature? Man. You see what's going to happen? And you they, they go back to the Sheldon Brown. Imagine if you had been talking stuff. Yeah. See, Reggie didn't come in the league said, I'm better than Barry Sanders. Yeah. I can't believe they took this running back at that team. Right. Guys didn't go out of their way because they had respect for Reggie because he respected the game. Guys are going to go out of their way. He let it be known. He said, I don't normally trash talk. He went out of his way to do something that he doesn't normally yeah. do. Mm-hmm. And that's what Baker's going to bring out of people. Mm-hmm. What they don't normally do, he's going to bring that. He's right. going to summon everybody's that's best true. to shut him down. Mm-hmm. And they will shut it down. Mm-hmm. Nick Bosa had watched the clip of him flag planting so many times that he had it down to <laughs> doing this. Right? Exactly. He has right. the whole thing. Yeah. That's yeah. good Boom. or bad. Right. 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 He and, waiting. Yeah, and this is why quarterbacks... He had rehearsed it, mm-hmm. clearly. Yeah. And, this is, and <laughs> okay. this is why quarterbacks normally stay out of the fray. Yep. Because yep. they are the most vulnerable skip. They are. Most. Because <laughs> you throw the ball, you throw it, you ain't got, hey, you throwing the ball, you looking down the field and the dude put, put his helmet in your chest, mm-hmm. yep. put it in your back, you never know. Mm-mm. So you see what's going on, Baker. You take you take a guy like Joey Bosa, uh, Nick Joey, Bosa. that's his yep. brother. Yeah. Nick Bosa, who says, I don't normally talk. I don't mm-hmm. normally say anything. Mm-hmm. But for you, so this is what you could, this is what you've created. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've created this tsunami. Only you can stop it by showing the proper respect. So, okay, you keep having that chip. Yeah. These guys in this league, they'll knock it off. Okay. I, I got it. Nick Bosa said he'd waited two years <laughs> to get even, right? Yeah. Okay. So he'd been just sleeping on that for two years. Yeah. I'm gonna get it. Yeah. And maybe Daniel Jones is waiting for his shot yeah. to get back at yeah. Baker. Maybe a lot of guys. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, look, I was a talker. And John used to get me, he's like, T, must you get Everybody upset. <laughs> I'm like, it ain't my fault that the guy I'm trying to talk to doesn't want to talk back. Mm, it's right. the guys that stink and zim them yeah, that yeah. the lineman wanted to get involved. It yeah. ain't my fault. Why do you call you T? It's a long story. <laughs> well, it must be a really long story. <laughs> no, and, 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 sure. is, and, yeah. and it really feels like the art of the rivalry is kind of lost between huh. like from player to player, right? Because I don't see as much 
of players getting into these rivalries, yeah. right? Everybody these, free. They, everybody free. Everybody now. friends now, right? Everybody, yeah. everybody signing trading, jerseys after the game, jerseys, trading jerseys. Like nobody's back. Nobody's in that rivalry. Like no, yeah. I'm on this field to dominate you. Okay, and so I'm going to do it every play as long as I'm on USC, the field. What would happen when you played Notre Dame or UCLA? Would they talk? No. No? They couldn't. What was they going to say? Oh, they <laughs> you can only talk if you beat okay, us, right. right? So Texas, they could talk all they, they want. They could talk. Anybody else? Right. I don't want to hear it. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. When did it change? Go. When did it change where this rivalry it's new, man, shifted? Everybody, the new generation. Everybody trained together. They go on vacation. They had mm-hmm. the, everybody at the spots together. Mm-hmm. I get all, you know. Look, it, I, it is, you know what is funny about you? You're warning everybody about Baker's for Baker's sake. He's going to get his. Yeah. But you were asking for it your whole career. Yeah, yeah. Right? Let's get, I gave respect, though. Yeah. They, normally, they initiate it. And once they got it going, I just need somebody. I'm the yeah. party starter. You know, yeah. you know <laughs> hey, I can get that thing crunk. But if you're showing up on the field, right, and you're performing... Mm-hmm. then you have a right to talk trash, right? right? Because you're backing up what mm-hmm. you're saying. Kind of like how Deion Sanders and Andre Rising, right? But like skip, some of these great battles. Yeah, but I wasn't out there talking about, man, Ben Colson, boom. Yeah. No, oh, man, this guy that. right here, but I don't know what they do. I don't know why they got him. Yeah. No, it's right, actually right, right. funny trash talk. Yeah. It was before the Atlanta Super <laughs> right. Bowl. Me and uh, mm-hmm. uh, Ray, B- uh, Ray Buchanan. Ray Buchanan, yeah. yeah. And that's the, yeah. that's the thing, Skip. I think sometimes is that, but I was very respectful to the game. Yeah. yeah. And I think sometimes that's what Baker is like. This is what you're going through is not unique. You're not the only mm-hmm. pl- person that's competitive. Right. Yeah. Everybody's competitive. That's yeah. how you get right. here. You don't get, guys don't get, it's like, you know, you hear some people talk, well, I'm really not that competitive. Everybody that plays <laughs> in the NFL is competitive. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody hated losing. No, yeah. that's true. And like, so this is not unique to these guys. Like it bugged me when I saw Baker not shake Hugh Jackson's hand Last year, like, after they fired him, like, come on, that's, that's, a, that's your Thank coach. You. He wants to say, well, he, he stared him down. Yeah. yeah. What, what, I know. What, what the coach got to do with this? Stare, he should have stared Sean McVay down. Right. Exactly. Stare Kyle Shanahan down. Yeah. You see, what I'm starting to see when he gets the upper hand, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. what he wants to yeah. put. Hey, don't be quiet work. now. Yeah. yeah. Don't be quiet yeah. now. Bring up those Remember, numbers. Remember, you called him in on hard knocks yeah. before the season started and congratulated the number one overall pick, Baker Mayfield, mm-hmm. for winning the backup job. And he would not start him for the first whatever it was, three or four games. Yeah, it's good. Right? But that was, right. that's not a shot at him. You know, that's I, I just the coach trying to do his job. Shot. Okay. Yeah, this I mean, is Baker, he's got the biggest chip on his shoulder. And as you say, maybe it just got knocked off. Mm-mm. They didn't knock off yet. No. no, 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 no. Yeah. <sighs> Can we just say, though, 49ers, 4-0 and for the first time yeah. since 1990. And they look good, too. Are we not paying attention to this? I mean, this that's impressive. We, we, yeah. we're gonna probably, we're gonna, I'm going to pay attention to him this coming this Sunday. Sunday? Yeah. The Rams. Mm-hmm. The Rams, okay. Oh, yeah. But he, but he was talking about, Skip, that Baker was in the pocket and how he's going to see over Buckner and uh, uh, the other big defense, yeah. six, 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 seven. Now they got another guy in that division that's shorter than Baker. Mm-hmm. That's going to have a problem yeah. seeing over the defensive lineman. So it's going to be very interesting to see how he handles this yeah. pass rush that the 49ers. Mm-hmm. The boy, they come. No mercy. Christian McCaffrey has been off to one of the hottest starts in NFL history. He is only the second player to have over 500 yards rushing and 250 yards receiving in the first five games of a season. At the pace McCaffrey is going, he will break the single-season record for most yards from scrimmage by over 200 yards. McCaffrey's teammate, Joe McCoy, said if the season ended right now, the running back would be MVP. Reggie, are you surprised McCaffrey has had this much success so early right now? I'm not surprised because I actually got a chance to meet McCaffrey when he was still in high school. Met him on a random trip on vacation, me and my wife. We were in Miami. I go into the gym. Him and his brothers are in there working out. This is why they're in high school, huh. Huh. right? And so I, I figured out who he was, told me his last name, and, and took a picture with him. Hmm. Um, but to fast forward to see what he did in college, and then now that we're having this conversation, the one thing I took away from that meeting was I saw his character on full display when he was in high school. On his spring break trip, him and his brothers are in the gym yeah. working out like that. And so to see him having this kind of success now, um, it only makes sense because his, his character and his work ethic is paying off on the football field. And Carolina is now finding ways to get him the football in space, mm-hmm. right? I don't know if they were doing as great of a job as that, or maybe they weren't giving him as many opportunities when Cam Newton right. was there because Cam Newton is the focal point when he's in right. the game, right? And so now they're having to make him the focal point. Yeah. They're funneling the offense through him. Right. They're getting him the ball in space, right? He had a great route. Uh, against Jacksonville where he ran what we call a jerk route. Yep. And Jerry Rice was really one of the pioneers of this route is where we run up, 
If it's man coverage, the backer grabs you, you have the option to break him down and go either east or west. Mm -hmm. If it's zone, you turn around, sit, and you catch the ball and go up the field. So he had a great route, scored a touchdown on it. And they got to do more of this, though. They got to get him the ball in space because that is where he's at his best is when he's in space. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying that he's not just a running back. We can use him a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why he returns punts, catching the ball to backfield, running the football. Um, he, he, he had one. You line where, him up in the slot. Yeah, line him up in the slot. You can do a lot of different things yes. with him. A lot of different things. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not surprised, Skip. And you know, obviously, I'm biased. I've known this kid his whole life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. I didn't think about that. I play. I play with his dad. I played with his dad. I know his mom. I know his mom, mm -hmm. Skip. Yeah. And, and, and describe his dad as a player. What was his it? dad was hardworking. His dad was faster than you thought. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure his dad. I, don't, I, I think his dad could not run him. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But Ed, wow. but he was gangly. Ed was six five, six five and yeah. a half. And he, we call him Forrest because every time he run, we say, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> but he could, he could, Ed could really run. He could. But the thing was is that oh. you don't think a white, this is a, a picture that. of me and Christian McCaffrey. Mm. This is at the second, Dang. this was at that the second Super Bowl. So that is amazing. So that, wow. That, that's Christian sitting on my lap. Okay. Skip, huh. remember? And by the way, didn't you tell me that he was his favorite yes, player? Yes, Christian McCaffrey. So that, you were his yeah. favorite player. Yeah. You know, that's, I, and that's why he wore number, I think he wore yeah. number five. Number five in Because, because so of Reggie. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Skip, I'm not surprised that you and I had this conversation. The thing that I'm surprised about is how durable he is for how small he yeah, is. I agree. Yep. I didn't have a problem with him running between the tackles because if you watch Stanford's offense, it's a lot of counters. It's a lot yeah. of trades. Mm -hmm. They run a lot between the tackles. So I wasn't concerned with that. But I'm concerned. I mean, he's getting 25, 30, almost 40 touches a game. Yeah. He's only 205, 210, yeah. maybe tops. Yep. I'm thinking somewhere between 205 and 210. Yeah. 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 The 35 to 40 touches, that's reserved for a back that's 230, 240. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not a 205 guy, but I'm not surprised that he can do so much, Skip. Mm -hmm. He can run inside. He can run outside. They're just trying to find as many different ways because, as Reggie yeah. mentioned, Cam is not there. Mm -hmm. So now you have to find he's your best player. So now how do we get our best player get the ball in his hand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing. They're throwing it to him. They're handing it to him. They're mm -hmm. pitching it to him. They can't give him enough. And the thing is, Skip, he doesn't leave the field. Mm -mm. He's one of the few NFL back. He never leaves the field. Mm -mm. Yeah. And to play that many snaps and to touch the ball as much as he does, he's unbelievable. Mm. And I can see why he's third. I have him third on my ballot. I would have Mahomes one. I would have Russell Wilson two. I thought yesterday you were leaning Russell. I thought you said. R Russ, Russell's gaining. I guess yeah. day to day. <clears throat> no, no, no. Russell's gaining. Mm -hmm. Russell, after that performance, yeah. Russell is gaining. Okay. Russell's closed that gap. But hey, mm -hmm. after the performance that he had Sunday, yeah. he's closed the gap too. They're right there. Shake them up. Mm -hmm. Pull one out. You won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he's unbelievable, Skip. Mm -hmm. I have been shocked <laughs> that he has not missed a game yet. Yeah. Because he did miss games at Stanford. Mm -hmm. And I thought he was going to have a harder mm -hmm. time in pro football than mm -hmm. he had at Stanford. Because as you know, <clears throat> you, you guys are about the same size. Yeah, no, we are the same size. You, We're you're the same six size. feet ish, yeah. 205. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. listed at 5'11, 205, mm -hmm. whatever. But again, I thought that Christian would be more icing than cake, that mm -hmm. he'd be nice to have, but you'd have to figure out ways to utilize him other than just banging him up the gut right. and mm -hmm. trying to establish the run with this little man yeah. who won't be able to stay that healthy. But but he they've been doing both with him mm -hmm. and getting yeah. away with it because he hadn't missed a game yet. Right. Yeah. And again, you timed 4-3-3 three, three yeah. coming out. He's 4-4-8. Four, four, so, mm -hmm. so he's not he, he's not like world class, but in his genes, mm -hmm. you go back to his grandfather mm -hmm. was was a world class. His mom skater. ran his mom ran track from and what mom, I hear. Yeah. Yeah. She, she played, she she played very, soccer too. Yeah. Yeah. He always says that his mom yeah. was the one he okay. gets. I think, I think <laughs> Ed <laughs> ran four four five coming out of college. Right. So, yeah. so he's got good bloodlines. <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. Really good bloodlines. Yep. And I always say this in, in covering any pro sport as long as I have. If you have fathers or grandfathers, it gives you supreme confidence that they mm -hmm. did it, I can do yeah. it. So, so he walks in the door fearless, like, right. I got this. Right. Yeah. Your brother helped you some, not, mm -hmm. not hugely, but you knew when you stepped on the field, yeah. my mm -hmm. brother did this. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, yes. it, it gives you a huge advantage. Skip, he grew up in the NFL locker room. Yeah, he's yeah. Only, I mean, that's he what I'm saying. Yeah, he got to come to work and he ran around the it, field. He's like, like, I want to do this. Like yeah. Ken Griffey Jr. Right. Yeah. He, he grows up in the Cincinnati Reds locker room. His dad is a star, mm -hmm. you know, like, okay, I can... I can do this. Yeah. I can be better than my dad. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And this kid might be better than all yeah. of them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's going to be better than yeah. His brother be better is than playing quarterback yeah. at 
Michigan. Yeah. Michigan. And you have another brother at Nebraska. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's so well, quite a family. Yeah. So Very what impressive. what's impressive to me so far is where, where he's scoring the most is he, on breakaway runs. We yeah. saw Breida start the game last night, but he's he's got an 84 and a, and a 64. You know, he's got long runs, mm-hmm. so he's breaking like like you. Yeah. When he, he looks fast with the ball, yeah. mm-hmm. not – you know, he he couldn't outrun you in a forty yard dash in your right. prime versus yeah. his yeah. prime. But but I think with the ball in his hands, he he can motor, man. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. And the narrative has changed too because when I first, like you said, when I first got into the league, they still wanted a big running back complemented by a smaller yes. running back, right? Yes. And so when I got in the league, we had Deuce McAllister. He was yeah. our big running back, and he was a banger. And he was a banger. Ooh. And now everybody wants the smaller back that can do a lot of different right. things, right? Alvin Kamara. Exactly. Alvin Kamara is probably the only other running back, back who I could say like, like do the him. same thing because you got Saquon. Yeah. Sa- people look at Saquon, but Saquon is two thirty five. Yeah. He people don't realize how big he is. <laughs> yeah. Saquon is two thirty five. Right. Yeah. Can run like that, but has hands and yeah. can catch. Yeah. 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 But. But Christian McCaffrey, the thing that I'm surprised about, not the success that he's yeah. having, but how durable. Yeah. 37 touches. It's a lot. That's a lot of – man, look here. It's a lot of touches. <laughs> and, and again, uh, knock on wood, I hope that he can stay healthy. Yes. But you have to know that the proof is in the pudding. You get that many carries, mm-hmm. even if you're 225, two, yeah. it's going – eventually it's going to happen, right? Okay. And it's going – and eventually there's going to be some injuries because this is a league of all-stars. There's grown men on that other side of football. But you, know what, but you know what helps now, Reggie? They don't bang during the week like we yeah, used to. Yeah, you're right. You're huh. right. See, yep. that was the thing. See, yeah. Back in the day, you have you carried the ball 30 yeah. times. Guess what? Wednesday, Wednesday you bang, practice, 9 on 7. Again. First and Thursday, wow. you bang him again. <laughs> yeah. And then Friday, yeah. you had on shells with your just shoulder pads. Yeah. Yeah. They don't do that anything now. Yeah. More times than not, it's a lot of walkthroughs mm-hmm. now. So, and, and these linebackers are a lot smaller, too. Yeah. yeah. 225, 230. That's a normal linebacker now. Well, you brought up white running back. Yeah. And... Again, I covered all the way back to Craig James. Remember this at SMU yeah. and then the mm-hmm. Patriots? Mm-hmm. And I figured Craig, he was a stud white running back at 230, 235-ish right. mm-hmm. who could run 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. And I thought this will be the last of the great white running backs because mm-hmm. he helped New England get to that Super Bowl, Bowl against the Bears. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I thought, well, this be, this kid is revolutionizing. Yeah. You know, like, and you know what he's going to do is – He's other young white kids are now going to yeah, see, gonna say, right, okay. I can do that too, yeah. right? I can go play running back too yeah. because before Christian McCaffrey, we haven't really seen a running back like him, a white running back like him mm-hmm. do it in the way he's nope, doing it right like now. This. So now he's no, going to inspire. Yep. There, 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 was, there was John oh, Riggins. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fullbacks. There was Larry Fullbacks. Zonka. Yeah. There was Mike Allstar type oh, yeah. running back. Yeah. I forget yeah. the guy. What's the guy, Skip? He played at Cleveland, had the one good year. Oh, oh Peyton Hillis. Peyton yeah. Hillis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Skip, there was like one good year. Yeah, yeah. yeah Skip, you know. And he was on the Madden. Yeah, Madden yeah he won the Madden cover. Yeah. They, were, they were built like him. Then I don't yeah. know what not happens. like that. Yeah. yeah, not like that. Yeah. And shifty. Yeah. Right? It kind of reminds me of Wes Welker, right? Yeah. Because before Wes Welker, you didn't see a lot of great white slot receivers. Nope. Now, nope. you're seeing it's a lot, yeah. right? And, and so, Edelman, he's, Edelman, go, yeah. he's going to inspire yeah. some kids. So, so now, they feel like, I can go play running back too, like okay. Christian McCaffrey. Now we need a corner. Yeah. Uh. We need to go and get away. We ain't had one in a while. Skip. Seahorn. <laughs> Seahorn. Seahorn. That's Dave a long Seahorn. time ago. <laughs> and Brad that was Davis. in your yeah. Super Bowl. You were Brad, da- Brad Davis uh, oh. uh, and Scott Case. And Scott Case. Scott, Scott University Case. of Oklahoma? Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, speaking oh. of oh. University yeah. of Oklahoma, Reggie yeah. and I have a busy ah. weekend, guys. Here we go. big one, baby. Red River Showdown. Are you sure you guys don't want to come and tell us Yeah, we need to go one? to the State Fair. So yeah, we on. have a two-hour <laughs> Big Noon Kickoff edition <laughs> that yeah. Saturday. Oh, so are you looking forward to I it? I am. I can't wait. It's my yep. first time to the Texas Isn't State Fair. Is it your first time? First time. I've oh, been, so. we experienced it last can't year. Wait. And let me tell you, it just seeing. the greatest. It, yeah. is the, it is the greatest. Man, you don't eat nothing. nothing. Like it. I'll be eating fried twinkies, I used to. <laughs> the Oreos, I have all no Well, Jason Garrett has been getting a lot of heat for the Cowboys' back-to-back losses. Jerry Jones said that the team's performance was, quote, certainly not been good enough. On the bright side, Jerry did say that over the course of a 16-game season, there is plenty of time for the Cowboys to get it together. So, Shannon, on a scale of 1 to 10, how panicked is Jerry? He's probably about a 7 skip. Mm. Um, because he's suffering from a lot, a lot of a lot of cowboy fans expectation, oh. mm. and he put it on himself because you heard him say, "Skip, this is a talented team we've had around here in a long time. Mm. It's as talented as some of those Super Bowl mm. teams." Skip, that's your best Jerry. You know what I'm saying? That's old Jerry. Jerry say, you know, mm. and Skip, and so that's what happened. And he was really feeling good. You look at that offense the first three weeks, beating up on Miami, beating up on Washington, the Giants. Ooh, 
Woo! Mm. Jerry liking that. Mm. And then all of a sudden, the realization. Mm. We had a... Mm. Give, you know, you get a balloon, you have balloon for your party. Yeah. They're all big and they'll blow it up real nice. Yeah. And then the next day, a lot of some of the air seats out there, mm. they're not as high as they once were. Mm. And then two days later, and then by that third or fourth day, they're on the floor. They, they were just at the ceiling, 20 feet up in there just, just a couple of days ago. That's where you are. Two weeks ago, you way up there. Couldn't you see? I'm like, man. Mm. Mm. Is that the cowboy balloon way up there? Mm. And now I'm looking right. Now I'm looking right here. I say, yeah, mm. there you go, right really? where you're supposed to be. Really? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And this. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> Skip, I can't open. Yeah. If Jerry, if Jerry, if, Jerry, if Jerry, uh, my thing is Jerry. If you're like, this is 16 games. Why are you talking like this? Mm. Why are you talking like this? It's not good enough last week, and it's not good enough this week. If it's over 16 games, if you say it's going to average itself out. Why are you talking like this? Mm. I don't want to hear my owner panic. Mm. Sound like he panicking to me, Skip. Mm. What it sound like to you? It sounds like he's scale of one to ten at a one. That's <laughs> yeah. what he is on the panic meter. And I'll tell you why. Why? This is one way that Jerry Jones is built differently than most owners. Back in the days, I used to do a pre-Monday night show on ESPN. This is back in the 90s. I would see Jerry on a Tuesday, Wednesday and he would pull me aside and say, hey, I was watching you guys debate on whatever it was called, Prime Monday, I think mm -hmm. it was called. And he would always ask me, why do you guys feel like you have to decide the season after five weeks? Well, it's because what we do. Right. That's, it's, it's yeah. what we're paid to do. Right. And everybody has an opinion, so we're just sharing our opinion. And, and he was always like, well, why don't you just let it play out a little bit more mm -mm. because you have to be patient with the season. No, right? I need, I need, I need okay. light bill, gas bill paid. Okay. I can't do that, Jerry. Okay. <laughs> so in the hundreds of hours, I interviewed Jerry for the three books I wrote about the Dallas Cowboys. He constantly brought up this phrase to me that he has a high tolerance for ambiguity. And I know that's a complicated <laughs> word, but it's a good Jerry word because it's it's tolerance for uncertainty. It's, mm -hmm. it's your risk factor. Right. How much are you willing to risk? And tolerance for ambiguity for Jerry came from the oil and gas business mm -hmm. because he drilled for a whole lot of oil wells that failed. Right. And he went complete bust one time and still loves to tell that story. He flew into Love Field and handed his credit card to the one behind the rent car counter. And she looked and she took her scissors out and cut the card in two because it didn't work. Yeah. Wild. It was out. Right. Right. So that's J Jerry knows that feeling of tolerance for ambiguity. So you, if you're going to own and operate a football team, oh, yeah. you better have high tolerance for well, what could or couldn't happen. Well, that's most owners, Skip. But most owners are not in front of the camera. Yeah. Most owners are not the face of their franchise. Mm -hmm. He's unique. He's the only owner, Skip. Now, he's he's more George Steinbrenner. George Steinbrenner, no matter all the superstars that he had, Skip, he was bigger than all of them because he did all the talking. He talked more than he, after the game, yeah. instead of interview, interviewing Billy Manager, whoever the manager was at the time, Billy Martin, Billy Martin excuse yep. me, mm -hmm. whoever the manager was at the time, they go to George. Well, instead of talking to the, uh, Ray, uh, Jason Garrett, who they right. go to, Skip? They go to Jerry. Exactly. Not Jared. They go to Jerry. They go, right? they go to Jerry. Okay. But George Steinbrenner had no tolerance for ambiguity no. because there's no salary cap in baseball. Right. So he was used to winning a championship every year because he could basically buy the he championship. Was buy, he was buying the best pitch on the market, the best hitter, whatever the best was, he bought Bottomless it. pockets. Yep. So if it didn't work for a stretch of a week or so, he's like, I'm going to fire the manager, right? right? Or I'm going to go buy somebody else. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's somebody's fault. Okay. But the, but the thing is, Skip, and if Jerry's like, okay, it's going to work itself out, then why are you talking, why are you talking hey, about it? But, but it's not that it'll work itself out. It's, it's that you have to be patient and give it a chance to work itself out. It's like deep down, you're not sure it's going to work out, but you got to wait. You can't overreact right. after five weeks of the NFL season because last year, they fell to three and five. Right. So they're three and two. So effectively, they could lose their, their next three games and be right where they were last year when they won the division and won a playoff I don't, game. I don't think that same thing going to happen this time. Okay, well, lose the next three. Well, you, you, you got the say Giants. That. You got the Giants. Okay, I mean the Giants. You got the Jets. Yeah. So you we already know how they're going to turn out. Right, okay. But they're coming in. It coming. Okay, but what, what does he know? So he just watched Carson Wentz play the Green Bay Packers and throw for a grand total of 160. Yeah. Yards. Then he watched Dak Prescott play the Packers and throw for 463. 160, 463. So he's saying, 
my quarterback's at least as good as that quarterback, and they got the Eagles at home in two weeks. But, 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 so why would he panic But now? my quarterback got the dub. Yeah. And they said when you go to Shannon Sharp uh, restaurant, he uh, don't have QBR, yeah. and he don't have almost wins on – Skip, I, you know what? You Would you like what Dak had? Okay. All he knows is that Dak beat Carson Wentz twice last year that was last as year. they went on their streak. That was last year. Okay. Well, he's well, still Dak, Carson Wentz. When, when did Dak going to beat Aaron Rodgers again? Huh. Well, I don't know. I hope in the playoffs. That didn't happen. Yeah. I, now, you, I would love to that, see that, him You in know the that's not going to happen. And I would love to see him at Lambeau in the playoffs. Oh. You know, because Dak oh, won a Oh, Lambeau. you want to go back and you want to plant your flag. You want to plant the Cowboy flag at Lambeau, huh? Yeah, I want to reverse the curse because Aaron Rodgers got some hex over Jerry World. I don't get it. I don't know what happens, but something bad always happens. Well, all I, all I know is that, you know, looking at that first game, mm-hmm. 35, 17, mm-hmm. 31, 21, 31, 6. Woo, we go to the Super Bowl. Okay. I already bought my ticket. <laughs> and then what happened? 10 points mm-hmm. and 24 points. Okay. Yeah. So where's my panic meter? It's at a five because okay. I don't like what I'm seeing from my defense. I haven't liked it you all better year. not like what you see with your quarterback. No, stop it. Your quarterback. I'm talking about my defense right now because the $100 million defensive end known as Tank or Demarcus Lawrence or as you call him, D-Law, <laughs> has been a no-show. And he was a no-show again Sunday. He had one tackle Sunday, and they say he's nicked. He's got two or three yeah. little things wrong. But, uh, again, what about I, your quarterback that no, want to be the highest played player? No, okay. When is he going to deliver? Keep going back to him, and that, that's the one thing I do trust on the team. You, I'm you, talking about my defense okay, when you de- okay. because I don't see enough from Robert Quinn the other day after he had the big back flat. Yard is re- back to back yard is really good. Okay. He remember he last year, pro football focus, had been the number one rated tackle okay. in all well, of football. Well, he looked like the number okay. one rated tackle. But I'm trying, okay, but what about, your, what about that defense that gave the Saints four field goals mm-hmm. and your quarterback that mm-hmm. wants to be the highest paid only got your 10. Yeah, he had a QBR of 77. That game played very well with his, without his two best receivers. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather have a QBR of 37 mm-hmm. and have 13 points mm-hmm. and win the game mm-hmm. or a QBR of 77 and 10 and lose the game? Yeah. New Orleans is really good. No, no, they no, stop. showed you how good no, they no, were. No, 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 no. How did Teddy Bridgewater look against Tampa that had just just shell-shocked the Rams at, at L.A.? Mm-hmm. What happened? Not, what, what happened? What happened to Teddy Bridgewater? Yeah. Did he not just throw Stop. a Mardi Gras party? Yeah. Yeah. We do you do the yeah. uh the Saints. Yeah. We make it you, seem like the Saints are the yeah. 85 Bears yeah. on defense. Yeah. They weren't. Okay. They're really good on defense. They're good, yeah. but they're not 85 Bears. They're okay. not 2000 Ravens or the O2 yeah. Bucks. Okay. So stop saying this. Okay. They got your guy, did not get them in the end zone but once. He got 10 points mm-hmm. against Teddy Bridgewater. Yep. He made one misfired throw yep. and missed Randall and, th- and what That's I told all. And what I tell you. Yeah, well, everybody throws And what did I nickname him? You want me to start showing you the bad balls that Carson Teddy, threw at Green Bay? Teddy. Yikes. I told you. His Yikes. name after the game was going to be. Teddy over troubled water. Okay. And what did he did he deliver? Uh-huh. Did he bring us home? Yeah. When did he bring us home in the you, idol you storm? Delivered. You've been ripping him and being sarcastic about him until now when he's showing you he is a starting quarterback in this league and he did go 11 and 5 for the Minnesota Vikings. I don't, Vikings know, what, I don't yeah. know. And make the Pro Bowl. I don't know what he was. Okay. So there's no shame what, in losing to that team. I don't know. Oh, oh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. You can't lose to a backup. Yeah. You said, when, when the last time Tom Brady mm-hmm. lost to a backup? So right now, the Dallas Cowboys are tied for first in the NFC. Say it East. again. Is that good? Say it again. Tied for first. Hold up. Now, after the first week, you were in first. After the second week, you was in first. After the third week, you were three game clear. You were two game clear. Mm. Right three, now. Tied for first. It's a long time. Tied season. with us. Jerry knows. Oh, walk it. Oh, walk it to him. See. Yeah, walk it to him. Still, Dak Prescott's still number one in QBR. And Carson Wentz is As a matter of fact, yeah, he's no more. But who's a, a MVP? Mm. Who's in front of the MVP, Bo? Well, you, you told me yesterday it was Russell Wilson. No, 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 no. Yeah. Walk it to him is in front of Dak. Oh, well, I, I mean, let that sink in for a second. I, I don't think he is. I think he is. Yeah. I'm, one, I'm, I'm one thousand percent certain. Uh, on what says who? On the polls that we just quoted. Oh, uh, what polls? The one that said okay. Mahomes was first, Russell is second, third is McCaffrey. Oh. Yeah. That one. You see, he, and, and Deshaun he, Watson he really, is fourth. Uh, Carson Wentz keeps throwing for like what? What did he throw against the Jets? One fifty or one? I don't know. He keeps having the kind of games you say Dak always has. Dak was having those games and losing. Huh. My guy having those games and winning. Really? Yeah. Uh, interesting. Dig it and Dak it. Yeah. Can't wait for a week from Sunday. A- another end at Jerry World. Seriously. I got that energy. I know you. No, I know you have that energy on Monday. I know you have that energy after you play the Jets. I know you have that energy. I don't know about that. Yeah, you have the energy, but. Just had a big team meeting yesterday. They did. I saw that. Together. For what? Yeah, they they yeah. got to get back. They're gonna what get, by the way, what's going their on. starting quarterback sounds like he's going to play. I don't know what the 
result will be today, but it sounds like Sam Darnold's going to play. So this will be a battle. Oh, they yeah. were, oh okay. He's yeah. building and, it up. And I don't care if they lose. It wouldn't be that bad. Three and three, and then they'll take off against the Eagles. No, they won't. Yeah. You say no. that. I just don't know if I believe it. No mercy. Following the Patriots' 33-7 win over the Redskins on Sunday, Adrian Peterson asked Tom Brady for his game jersey. Moments later, three-time Pro Bowl offensive lineman Donald Penn also asked Brady for the jersey. Brady said he'd have to send Penn another one since Peterson got to him first. Shannon, I want to start with you here. Would you ask for Brady's jersey if you were still playing? I don't know. I, I think it's more of a generation thing, Skip. Yep. I did do. Uh, um, I got a couple of pairs of Dion shoes. I got a pair of gloves from CC. Did you? Got a pair yeah. of gloves from Jerry. But they sent them to me when I was in the locker room. Okay. I think the thing but now. You asked. I asked. Okay. I think the thing now is to get the guy jersey and everybody stand and take a picture up. We see it in basketball. Yeah. They've adopted soccer rules now. Soccer changing thing, jerseys, yeah. Skip. I, I, I don't know. Maybe. How did you ask? You sent somebody? No, no. I asked him. I asked him, you know, after, you know, before the game. I was like, bro, you mind if I get those shoes? Really? He's like, yeah. I sent them, and the equipment manager would bring, bring them to them me. Over. And what did you do with them? I still have them. You do? Home. Yeah. And do they mean something? I just wanted them. Okay. They were, and, and, but, I, but I can understand. Those, yeah. those were the best players in the game you, at the time. Do you realize a game-worn Tom Brady jersey, what that could be worth yeah. in, in 10 years? But I hope, a lot Skip, of I hope they ain't thinking about selling the things. Skip. I don't know. I do have a I do have a game worn uh, Peyton Manning Bronco jersey. Do you? I do. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 9:30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one.